You felt amazing. Compared to the regular day. You felt fucking amazing. Night and day. <laughs> she can't talk right now, Andrew. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, the legs just gonna continue shaking like that? I guess so. Alright. Cause I laid the hammer. <laughs> That's what happens. You're annoying. But I laid that hammer. You did. Exactly. Can I get it again? When? Right now. Alright, give me a second. Okay. I need some air and water. Okay. Damn right he needs some water! Damn right he needs some fucking wow. air and water! Yeah. You know what else needs some go. air? That pussy after that shit got blue chewed the fuck up! Let's go! Blue chew ain't even pay for a for a for a pre-roll. We just doing it anyway. Welcome to Flagrant 2. No easy buckets. Analysis by assholes. Water cooler commentary for your sports needs. My name is Andrew Schultz. I'm here at Akash Singh. Alex. And then there's another guy who's not here, but his name is Real Life Cast. You know, we should open the episode with that Will Smith monologue when his dad leaves. How what come he don't that? want me? Oh, <laughs> that's the, Fresh Prince, the Fresh Prince. <laughs> as we should have played up top, fucking Kaz. How come no, he don't want us? The irony that his name is Real Life Kaz and we never see him live. <laughs> 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 but yo, I got a shout out to It's Just Asinine for uh, hitting us up with the Blue Chew. Yo, uh, for real. The Blue Chew testimonial. You know, we got some other testimonials. We're going we're gonna to let you hear those a little bit later in the day. But um, I just want to say what's up to everybody. Thank you. We in here. Alex didn't get dressed up today. You did. You got a shirt on. You know, yeah. fly as fuck right now. Get out of here. What? Fly. Yeah, yeah. What's so fly? I look good. No, you, you dress like basketball shorts. Yeah, but and like a, a bouncer nah, from the, the are, waist up. These are more than just basketball shorts. What are they? It's like you don't play ball in these. You don't? No. Nah. Why not? They're sweat shorts for one. Okay. And so you sweat can't... shorts are dressy? What are those yeah, for? Yeah, now they are. Now they're dressy? Yeah. Yeah. Where'd this confidence come from? I feel good today. You do? Yeah. Alex got him I a black like woman. I don't like it. I don't like it. I got him a black girl. Did you finally get yourself a black girl, I did, bro? I you did. did. I did. You got rid of yeah. them white chicks, huh? I'm back home, baby. There we go. The 30% Congo. Gotta go somewhere, man. Wait, is that where you're from? Oh, yeah. Alex did 23 and me. I did, did you really? Ancestry.com. Yeah. What is it? 30% Congo? Yeah. What's the difference between 23 and me and Ancestry? I think Ancestry is a little bit more like in depth. Really? Yeah. So why so, would you do both? Why don't you just do... My sister did 23 Me, and so hers came back like just percentage of... White husband didn't want her to know too much, this <laughs> oppressive ass motherfucker. But it just said like West African and East African. It didn't say like specific location. How much, how much of her mix did she blame on him? Like if she was like 8% Irish, was she like, you motherfucker? I'm actually 8%... Uh, what was it? Welsh, I think. Your people. Welsh. What are your people? He's Scottish. No, no, no. Oh yeah. Welsh. Welsh. But <laughs> Welsh. He yeah. just said. Public school, man. Public Damn. school. Man. Don't give me that public school public shit you anymore. You say the same shit. Get the yeah, fuck out. I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> okay, you can't have the excuse. All right, listen. First of all, thank you very much for wasting the first three minutes of the podcast <laughs> on your stupid fucking shorts. Jesus Christ! I thought it was gonna be quick hit. I thought we were gonna quick hit Alex on his shorts, and then we're gonna get to to Akash's shirt. Akash got a wild shirt on today. Yo, Akash love his button down short sleeves with the parrots on. Y'all so confident in what you're wearing. Yeah, but I'm cute as fuck. (laughs) You are. (laughs) (laughs) I'm cute, boy. Yo, instead of instead of pause, I say fast forward. (laughs) That's how you know it's real gay. (laughs) When you be like, yeah. (laughs) Yo, son, I will say this. I'm doubling. I'm, I wear a purse now. It's not a purse. It's like a over the shoulder. But it's a purse. It's basically a purse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I just almost described the purse. Yo, why don't you <laughs> wear a fanny pack, dog? It's the son, same son, thing. son, son. Let me tell you something. I am doubling down on. We are so fortunate that as we become washed, that clothing is cool. That's really a good point. Right? Like we're mid That's thirty. Really I'm thirty four. You're yeah, 30, 34. 34. Alex, how old are you? Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck's thirty one, bro? <laughs> anyway, so uh, oh, so you're thirty one, and as we go into our washed years, right? All of a sudden, the most comfortable ugly sneakers are cool. Oh yeah. Look what I'm wearing right now, son. You ready for this? 
<laughs> oh, son, fuck. Son. Air Trumps. Son, I got the Air, air Trumps. Trumps. <laughs> I got the Air Trumps. I got the Trump twos. <laughs> the Trump twos, bro. I got I got New Balance. Those are disgusting. Right? Made in America. No, those are the tiki torches right there. Son, first of all, nah, <laughs> those fam. Are the this shit's a seafoam tor- green, bro. This shit is swaggy. This shit is so swaggy. You know what they do look like? Yeezys. Why would you say that? They look like New Balance. Yeezys are the ones that look like New Balance. That, they, yeah. That's the original. That is true. That's sure. 23 and Me. Sure. That's but Congo. You know who else voted for Trump? Who? Yeezy. Oh, my God. Why are you guys trying to pin me out? I just got out of this. Oh, I, oh right? <laughs> yo, I just I just crawled out of the uh, the alt right tiki torch. <laughs> that's how that's how it works. You just directly outrage somebody else. Twitter just started. Just, just stop talking. <laughs> talk called me all right. It he just did. it just moved one seat next to you. All the heat, all the hate. <laughs> just, <laughs> he just he just made world star. Now. You just slid out that bitch. Yo, yo, yo no this is this is this is so true, son. This is so true. A couple years ago, motherfuckers called me all right. Today, I got a stand up clip on world star. It's lit. Yo, you made it. Yo, I fucking made it, you bro. Made I'm it. back, baby. <laughs> I'm not racist no more. I'm not racist no more, y'all. Oh, ba- I am delivered. <laughs> I- oh, you <laughs> you it, remember that clip? Oh, yeah. I ain't gay no more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were telling us about that. I I'm did? Delivering. I watched that a lot. <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> Yo, fast forward is that new shit, yeah, that's, son. That's very funny. It really is. Okay, so what I'm saying is I'm doubling down on this dad shit. I got my merce. Right? I got it. Wow, that's gay. Get a fanny pack. That's dead. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? That's Hashtag a dick. me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's men too. Hashtag men too. That's what we do. When you, when you do it to a gay guy. Oh, I thought hashtag he too. He too is good. Hashtag he too. Hashtag he too. I like that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Yo, what if you got your 23 and me back and they were like, you are 98% gay? <laughs> I guess new is coming, son. We on a different level out here. So we on a different. I got new is coming fraction of a second before. You saw that? I got already knew it. You knew what it was. So said, what if you, had 23 you knew it. You already knew, knew it. Knew. Motherfucker, it fast forward to his brain. His brain. That's how gay I am! Cass, <laughs> listen to podcast like, thank God I'm not there. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, Whew. so, you, you know merch. how, like, I got my merch, I got my comfy ass thing. I got, I got, to, finally, I got the Adidas boost, the one that oh, you've been telling me about. I got you been telling me about them for years, years and years. Multiple years. Yeah. And you've never once said, yo, these are the cool ones, these are the hot ones. Nah. What was the pitch? The most comfortable shoes I've ever had. Ever had. I got a pair. Excuse me. Excuse me. Another burp, sorry. What was that? Come. Okay. <laughs> 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 Nobody wilder than us. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Oh, man. Okay, so um, I, I'm so happy. You know that of our 75,000 motherfuckers that listen to this, you know one person finally convinced the audience, the, the office to just listen to the podcast. <laughs> right? You know, he's like, no, I'm telling you, these guys are just funny. Just, just everybody, why don't we play it out loud? Let's just play it on a boom box. Oh. Right? And the entire office just heard. <laughs> Come. <laughs> All right, so got my merch, got my comfy. I got the Adidas Boost, right? And I got these Seafoam New Balances, right? Right. Um, you know my jeans, I'm chilling on, just tees. Right. Everything's fucking good. I'm doubling down a thousand percent, and I thought about you know how like. Uh, gay dudes who double down on gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We're not talking about a gay group that you don't know. We're the talking about a guy. Crop tops and you see his walk, belly, son. Walk like a fucking model yeah. down the runway. Hey, that shit. Going, yeah. yeah. Do that shit yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Make like mad sound effects. You know what I mean? Like, like they're leaning into the gay. Like, it ain't no confusion. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Like, it, it's like, there ain't no. When did it's he come out? It's confusing how someone could be that gay. Son, my man live in a place with no closets. <laughs> ain't no closets. Do you know what I mean? He got a hanger. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? So right. it's like, so that's how I'm doubling down on dad. Right. Dad attire. Right. I ain't trying to do this cool shit no more, bro. Comfort. I'm un- I'm coming out. Right. I'm coming out as dad, bro. Unapologetically comfort. How much is your t-shirt? That's an expensive t-shirt. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That dad- t-shirt is from Kith. 
It is from Kiss. How'd you know that? I I peeped through Kiss. I, I like Kiss, and I went in there. I saw. Yo. I was like, oh, yo, you got matched with that logo. Stone Island. That's my brand. I fuck with them. All right. Well, you know what these dudes? This is kind of a sports related thing. Okay. Even though it's too early to talk about sports. But we'll talk about it. Too early. Yeah, yeah. That being said, putting dicks in butts is athletic. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's why gay dudes in good shape. They have pumped dudes' asses like they bro. Bro. Hey, Alex, yo, I don't know why you brought this up. (laughs) This motherfucker every time. Every time we get the listen notes for the show, it's always talk about putting dicks and butts in the <laughs> beginning of the show. We're like, yo, we had a busy ass week of sports. Why are we talking about this? Right? You got to do what the producer wants, though. You yo, know I, mean? I know. We're, you know, victims of you. Hashtag us, too. Hashtag us, us too. too. <laughs> 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 bro, oh, bro, it's so funny. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, Motherfucker. This dude came out, the Les Moonves. You heard about yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. CBS guy? Yeah. The guy who runs all the CBS that came out. There were like six girls that came came out saying that he did some like wild shit to them. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. And they were like, this happened between 1970 and like 2018. And I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Yo, fam, like, you a man with immense power, a fucking billionaire, you running That's all these shows? one girl every eight years. One girl every, like, it's like, you the, like, the laziest serial assaulter ever, like, you know how, like, motherfucking Jason Voorhees need to come back every certain amount of years, or the Candyman need to come back, like, every horror movie is, every, every year on this day, he comes back, like, the dude Jason, it was oh, the really? camp. It was the ki- oh, that's Halloween. I, I should know. I'm in the movie. <laughs> no, in Jason Halloween? is no, no. Friday that's Michael 13th? Myers. Friday the Thirteenth. Isn't Jason Michael Myers? No. Who the fuck is I Michael they Myers? The same person. You did? Yeah. Well, thanks Who's- guys for trashing the new movie I'm in. <laughs> Who's the one with the hockey mask? That's what? Jason. The hockey. That's Michael mask. Myers. Yeah, that's Michael Myers. But my- no, no, no. Jason Voorhees got the hockey mask. Okay. So who's Michael Myers? Michael Myers is another dude what who wore like? a mask that was white, but it wasn't hockey. Jason is hockey. Jason is hockey. And he's the one who's at Camp Crystal Lake. Okay. And he, yo, Jason, no joke, low-key respectable because, like, he, if he's going to kill, he also want to see titties. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, he's a murderer. Be like a real explanation, like Omar from The Wire is kind of respectable because he only robs drug dealers. No, but he's thinking <laughs> like about the Jason, audience. Jason is nah. respectable because he also rapes. No, nah, no, nah, he don't rape, but he could like he he don't do that at all. He just he, he's raw murderer. He loves murder. That's his shit. Like he, but <laughs> what he does is sure. he waits. He waits for her to shower, right? Or he waits for her to hook be hooking up with her man by the lake. You know what I mean? Like, oh the girls never, like, playing Color War in camp or whatever that game was, right? They're never playing hopscotch, and then he comes out of nowhere, just ree, ree, right? Draw four. And exactly. Then... That bitch putting some shampoo, shampoo in her eyes. She can't really see. You know what I mean? Like, but he can see. Well, titties! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how many times do you think it happened? Like, it doesn't make it in the movie, but how many times do you think it happened? The girl's like, ew! There's a pervert here. And he's like, yeah, I'm a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. You gay killed. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I'm doubling down on dad shit. Akash. Everything except uh, the girl and the kid. <sighs> God, why do you have to bring up the sensitive <laughs> subjects, Akash? My bad, dog. Son. My bad. All I want is a girl and a kid. You know what I mean? Yo, Alex, Alex here, took out of his headphones. Yeah, like, he, he can't listen a thousand he times. killed so many babies in his fucking life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Won't you hear that in HD? All right? All right? Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. Wow, you guys are... Yeah, yeah. What? Today is what? crazy. You know who won't be able to find out their ancestry? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. All those fucking babies you killed. <laughs> oh Hashtag wah too. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, shit, we're done. We're off the We out here. Flagrant. No, we just we just uh. touched like every topic. <laughs> like every topic. We no, no. At least we can that's actually touch that. That's the beautiful. That's the beautiful thing. Look. Here's the reality, man. 
that guy, and I've been thinking about this, James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. who got in trouble for all those old tweets, right? Everybody in Guardians of the Galaxy, the whole cast, wrote a petition to get him rehired. And I'm hoping for him to get rehired. Yeah. Because if he gets rehired... Yeah, that's a new precedent. I think we're all good on old yeah. tweets, yeah. right? Yeah. Because he did the wildest... Here's shit. what's crazy, though. Yeah. I don't know for a fact... There's but something you, to that, well, no? no you, are, you hear wild speculation about other directors actually molesting kids, and ain't nobody saying a fucking word... Because they all want their careers, but then this guy tweets some shit, and everybody's like, "Oh, get him oh, out of Hollywood!" You're right? Throw the guy, him out. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Roman Polanski did that. Polanski shit. actually did it. You hear speculation about other. Now I'm yeah. I'm outside enough that I have no idea, mm -hmm. but you hear whispers about other dudes a lot. Yeah, directors. Like one or two guys, shit. you hear the name. Directors? Shit. Yeah. Who? <sighs> oh, fuck. He's a dude that did one of the X Men. Really? Brian Singer. Really? Yeah. I'm actually nervous to say it out loud because apparently are you going out for X -Men? Apparently he's crazy. Like, like he knows you know a guy that he might have done something to. You're done. Like he's not gonna let you work. Really? Here. It's like crazy. His name is what? Brian, <laughs> <laughs> Brian Singer. So either my career is over or I'm Hannibal. <laughs> One of the two. So y'all, if y'all assholes can make me Hannibal, that'd be dope. Yo, you this comes have out some good shit. But I don't like throwing out allegedly shit. I yeah. don't fuck with that. Yeah. Like, I got to know for facts, you right, know, if right, we're right. going to talk about, you know, and, and you're going to risk somebody's, you know, well-being and light, livelihood like that. All I'm saying is if somebody who said jokes about pedophilia on Twitter while and now is working for Disney gets rehired, right? Disney especially, right. everybody else got to fall in line. Everybody else got to go, oh, okay, back in the day we all said fucked up shit. Right. Back in the day everything was crazy. Son, I was in the gym today listening to an Eminem song. That was just playing in the gym. I couldn't believe. Like that I was crazy. Son, I remember when we were young, listening to Eminem, and Eminem's argument was always like, it's just music and yeah. it's art, it's what we're doing. I listened to a song today and I was like, oh, I could. the guy goes, uh, he was some shit about uh they gave me an applause for what I did in Colorado, basically Columbine. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's like I did it. He goes, he goes, I beat my bitch. Yeah. He says that. I'm doing this, that, the other, killing this, blah, 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 throwing around the F word. Like all these crazy things yeah. that we were playing on kids' TV show. TRL was a kids' TV show. Here's what I'm fucking 13, 12. We were 13, 12 years old. Here's what I've always said. You know how we made fun of those moms who were trying to burn Eminem CDs and posters? Yeah. Now we are those moms trying to ban... And they're actually much cooler than us because ain't no fucking way Eminem flies in today's day and age. Bro, what... what here's a dead You're, serious we're question. We're all just soccer moms what with our would you Would you allow your kid <laughs> to listen? What would I allow my kid to listen to? Would you allow your kid to listen to it now? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Words are words, and my kids, need, my kid needs to know that words are words, and they can be hurtful. So be careful with them. But at the end of the day, the actions that you, your actions are, should be what speak. Okay. Now, and I'll support you if somebody else comes down on you. Cool. I just need to know you're doing the right thing, and then I got your back. My father took away my <clears throat> my um, Snoop Dogg CD. Really? Or cassette? Well, look how effective that was. Hmm. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, because no, the N-word? Your dad yeah. is mad civil rights. He's very sensitive. Uh, yeah, like he's big civil rights. And also the N-word specifically, he wanted us to know, you know, definitely not say that. So oh, yeah, he yeah. Thought... That's, a, that's an important thing, I think, for every not black person to know. Yeah, yeah, it is. I always hear, and Indians will say it a lot, and they'll be like, no, nah, I mean, my black friends let me say it. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about black friends. Let me hear you say that shit to a black stranger uh... with, with heart. And then I'll be like, all right. I guess, I guess I guess if somebody earned it, it's you. <laughs> Bro, I remember I was with Jamil and we we're in Fire Island. Right. And there was one of these like Long Island kind of hood dudes. <clears throat> right. You know? Like white kid, but like you white know that like white hood, that yeah, like yeah. that poor white shit, right? Poor white. Yeah, Fuck but like, <laughs> like he wasn't like a rich kid fronting uh, trying yeah, to be yeah. cool. He was a dude who grew up in the hood, poor white dude. And he was out there, we were at the beach, and he was out hanging out with us, and he he dropped it with Jamil. And he was like, the three of us were there, and he was like, he's, I'm not going to say it, I'm going to say ninja, but he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, yo, I was, I was just there, it was just me and my ninjas, and we were doing this, the other. And I remember I looked at him, I was like, that guy's brave. 
<laughs> wow. That is shocking. Like, and Jamil is just so unaffected by anything. I think Jamil, I can't speak for him, but like, I think his general position is like, I won't give anybody that power over me. Right. Because on some level, you are giving power to somebody. Like, if I, if one word can piss you off and now I got to beat you up and then we're both in the hospital or do something like that, whatever. But it was one of those things like, this dude really, this dude must have known what he was about to get into. And it could have went really bad. He got it. Would you have, Alex? Would, you, you, Alex, don't, you don't, I don't ever back really hear when you, you say were it. back when you were black. What, <laughs> right? We know that you're Native no, American now. Alex but, got a Alex got a black girl now, so he's officially not black anymore. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. First of all, black people queen. just found out Alex is black. Did you guys know that? Yeah, yeah. yeah you're telling me that. Oh, yeah. But did we say it on the podcast? Yeah, we did. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, guys. Fuck you. It's not a lot of black Alexes. <laughs> go on, go on. Well, um, his, you know his real name. Yeah. Okay. Can I tell everybody your real name? Alex you is I my just... real name. No, your real no, your, your real I'll your spell it. Your birth name. I'll, your birth name. I'll just spell spelling it. Spelling is not any different. <laughs> oh, it isn't? <laughs> what? I'll spell it. D A N. No, no one knows. It's like all the li- the listeners are babies. It's like... Yeah, they're little babies. <laughs> I maybe they won't, you know. Look, all right. Well, you're obviously Alex is your entertainment name, but your your given birth name is Alex. G A Y. I still got it. I still got it, guys. Okay, um, but have you? What so would you do in that situation if a white guy says the N word? But he's not saying it hateful. He thinks he's down. He thinks yeah, he's no. cool. I grew up in Far Rock, and there was a few white guys, Indian guys, like guys of New York that weren't black, and they would New say York it all don't the time. Give a fuck. Yeah, I didn't care. The like, South, you know, gives you, a fuck. Yet yeah, you gonna know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna learn today. I also, <laughs> I also think that the South doesn't have, um, and I don't know this for certain, but the South doesn't have these like almost white people, right? Like Albanians. Oh yeah. Like no. Albanians are white, and everything about them looks white, but they might come, but they come here, and a lot of times they identified yeah. with black and brown yeah. people, mm-hmm. right? They're Muslim, a lot of them, right? So they fold into this different culture right. and like they feel more comfortable maybe we saying it. We got like two it. Puerto Ricans in you, Texas. Yeah, you don't, y'all don't got ambiguous down there. No, we got Mexican, just, we got black, Mexican, we got white, black, we got Indian. couple Asian, couple Indian, yeah. white. So yeah. everybody knows what's going on. Yeah. Whereas New York, you see a white dude there's a lot of like Sean King white guys. You know that guy Sean King? He's like the Twitter yeah. activist guy. Yeah. Any black? I don't know what he is, but there's it's, he's ambiguous enough. Yeah. Right? You're like, wait a minute, it, what? Huh? Huh? All right. He just yeah. like oh, who's that rapper? He has a song like I'm Logic. Right, I'm black. Logic. Yeah. yeah. He's another ambiguous one. Like he's Atlanta, I think, but yeah, <clears throat> he mad ambiguous. Hold yeah, Logic. Yeah. Yeah. Is he half black? Yeah. Wait. Are you sure? Has he ever talked about it in his songs? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, has he mentioned that like at all in his song? I don't know if he's ever mentioned that. Does he mention it? He might. You, you gotta let people know you're not a white rapper. Yeah, but you know do, what I mean? but do like did he ever say it in like even one time in a lyric? Here's, or here's the thing you yeah. gotta understand about logic. Yeah, please. No one cares yeah. about logic. <laughs> I'm not 14. I don't give a fuck about logic. <laughs> My man's name is Logic. You think I'm going to listen to a rapper? Listen, with his, could that name? be the whitest name? <laughs> <laughs> you chose a fucking math principle? <laughs> a fucking college course is your name? Get the fuck out of here. Jesus. Yo, I'm MC Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll be out here with the books and shit. That actually kind of sounds hard. hard. What, Dewey Decimal Dewey, System? Dewey Decimal, yeah. See, I remember using that with a guy in the audience once. There was this guy who was just a fucking nerd. Yeah, and he was just sitting there, and I was like, "Dude, you look like you memorized the Dewey Decimal System." Oh, it's a and great he was reference. like nineteen. He was like, "I don't know what that is." <laughs> <laughs> for every for all you guys that are nineteen, uh, it's it's the library. Remember the library? No. They In the no, library, I got no clue. Oh yeah, that's right. Libraries nobody goes to. Yeah. No. Dude, we should record a podcast in a library. Our podcast in a library would be the funniest fucking thing that on earth. Would be hilarious. And then after we could like read. <laughs> 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 oh man, yo! So I was up in uh, I was up in Montreal this past uh, this past weekend. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Okay, so I did this festival called Just for Laughs. It's uh, 
pretty amazing festival. I had done it five years ago. I did New Faces for it, and um, they this is the first time they invited me back for it. And it's like a very prestigious comedy festival. But they don't normally like our type of comedy, so it's it's big that you got invited back. Right. So and it it was it was interesting. Like you know, I mean, I've spoken at length on this show about maybe the industry not embracing me or me not being one of like the chosen guys in industry but it was how do i explain it i'm i'm not taking a victim standpoint about any of this shit I th- i'm just inspired by it you say no i'm gonna find another way to make it happen right so um i mean even the first time when i went down there it was i did a show called, a showcase called new faces where it's just like the new people in comedy yeah. right and generally when you're doing that you're brand new and nobody knows who you are by that time i had a network deal with mtv i had my own shows coming out so i've always had to like i think overachieve to experience these things but um i think a lot of times what happens when people get in that situations where they're like told no and like not not being allowed to do certain stuff there's like this resentment that they yeah, end up having for sure. and that's some shit that like you cannot do because we have to do business at the end of the day yeah Business is business. We don't personalize it. Right. If they make the wrong decision and I just got to work my ass off and figure out a different way, God bless. Right. And so it was kind of validating this year after, you know, the album going number one, like starting to sell out these shows around the country. And then finally they gave me an opportunity to do the festival. And um, at first they didn't give me my own hour. And I told my agent, uh, I said, I said, no, we're not going to do it. Hello? Hey. So at first they told my, my, my agent, I was like, hey, man, I want to do the hour when I go up there. I know I got brilliant idiots and I know I got flagrant two fans out there that want to check yeah. it out. And that's what's most important to me. Right. And um, so if they don't give me that, I'm not interested in doing it. And it was one of these cool things in my career, which was I finally was able to have the leverage to like say no. Right, right, right. You know, to yeah. a thing that was pretty prestigious. And they came back and they gave it to me. We did the hour. Wow. Yeah, and, and you guys sold that shit out in four days. I'm telling you, there's a lot of shows out there that were not sold out at all. And you guys sold out in four days. Um, and it was just, they offered me another night, but it was a couple days before, so I didn't have enough time, I felt, to like properly That's promote great. it and shit. But like, I went, did it. <clears throat> People asked for you guys. Alex, they thought you were going to be up there with me because I think you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was supposed to. And, uh, <clears throat> and it then you were crazy, though. And I, yeah, I know it's expensive to fly. And people are asking for you, Akash, and and it was just dope to be a part of the to be a part of the festival. And I got it, I understood it, and um, what a hose accent for me though. Nah, no, just just a dude. I knew that. Yeah, no, there was no guy, there was no hose asking for you. Nah, they were axing. Nah, they weren't ax. They weren't axing at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is axing? <laughs> no matter how educated a black dude is. That was, he asks questions. I've always said that since I was young, and yeah. even if I like consciously try to not say it, it's still like I have to go. It's asking. to the point that when a black guy says "ask," I'm like, "The fuck did you grow up? <laughs> What's wrong with this fucking dork?" Obama had to grow up in Hawaii <laughs> to learn how to say "ask." <laughs> Dude, for real. Um, so here's the thing about Montreal. Montreal is known for having the best strip clubs yes, in the world. I've heard this. Now, the reason why they're the best is because you can pretty much touch them. Right. That's why they're the best. Hashtag you too. Hashtag you. But there's no, it's a me too, not me too zone. Right, right, right. right. You enter that zone and everybody knows what time it is. It's free too. (laughs) Hashtag free too. (laughs) That's what it is. Now, I got a spot that I go to when I'm in Montreal. It's called Kama Sutra. Okay. Shouts to y'all people. Yeah, I don't hate that. <laughs> <laughs> ain't oh ain't nothing girl. Indian about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. So this place is fucking nuts. Right. I remember once I was there shit-faced for my buddy's bachelor party. Right. I have two girls dancing on me. Right. Now I'm fucking drunk, oh gosh. <laughs> I don't drink that much, but when I do. Right. You suck, dude. I sucked the All right, right. My bad. dicks. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. But when I do, I go in. Right. I'm sitting there. I'm so drunk. I don't even know what's going on. These two girls are giving me a lap dance at the time. Yeah. At the same time. All of a sudden, I just look at them and I go, I want you to eat her ass. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, What? <laughs> They're French, right? They speak like French, you know? Yeah. But they also speak Spanish, but it's not that good. I go, I go, I want you to 
take her ass and then eat it. Yeah. And she goes, oh, you want us to eat each other a pussy and ass? I go, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. I go, no, no, let me clarify what I'm saying to you, mademoiselle. Okay? I want you to eat her ass. Now, I'm getting lap dances. They were $20 a song each girl. That's... An right? incredible value. Yeah. No, but, that's standard. That's standard. Um, standard? Is it standard when yeah. their money ain't worth shit? <laughs> so it comes down to 15? Oh, okay. Let's okay. fucking okay. go. Okay. Wait, a lap dance is like $20? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's standard. Yeah. But I she was expensive. Now, they're both dancing here. These hoes ain't shit. These hoes ain't shit. $20 <laughs> each, right, Akash? They're yeah. doing the dance for $20. I go, I want you to eat her ass. She goes, yes, we can do this. And I go, how much is that going to be for you to take your mouth <laughs> and get down there. <laughs> oh, they gotta see the video of it. <laughs> and then eat. <laughs> and then eat a rest. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Right? And she goes. She goes. She goes to me dead ass. What she says to me. She goes. Well. <laughs> She goes, um, it will be $20 per person. I go, bitch, did you not even raise the price to eat her ass? <laughs> what kind of socialist-ass country is this that you don't even understand the, uh, the idea of bumping the fucking price? If you ask for, uh, for like, guacamole, it's $1.25 oh extra. No, Do you a, know what I mean? A Long Island iced tea is $20 in Manhattan. Fam, you could be getting a girl eating another girl's ass. <laughs> There's no mix in price. Yo, I'm sitting there. Who do these hoes think they I'm, are? Son, I'm it's looking at free drink. Bro, do you know I'm so this drunk? Bitch. I'm looking around the entire strip club, and there's <laughs> other people that are paying $20 for lap dances that are not getting their ass eaten, right? And dead ass, I'm with my group in a booth, right? And I'm sitting in here, and they're all getting lap dances. I go, it's the same price if they eat each other's ass. <laughs> Yo, my boy Shamil and all them are looking at me crazy. They're like, what are you talking about? Just go to the ass in. We done with the lap dances. It's $20 for them to eat the ass. The same they haven't figured out oh how God. to raise the price yet. They don't know about math or commerce. <laughs> Sons. Oh, my God. <sighs> Can you say what year we talking? What? What year? Like approximately, what year ass it was? <laughs> I prefer nineteen. Uh, <laughs> nineteen. Nah, uh, this was uh, three years ago. Oh, okay. About three All years right. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you ask? Because uh, that's like a. Yo, my man thinks inflation kicks up that hard. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just being like an ass eating request. Like you're pretty. Oh, you were you were ahead yeah, of the curve. Yeah, OG sure. with that. Yeah. Son, 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 <laughs> son. Because I think I was just. Entertaining the thought of the ass eating, ass eating around that time. Yeah, but you were getting your ass eating, and you were also getting your your shit pushed in. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, with the fingers. I never had the fingers. Can you, you did. stop adding the finger? I never had the finger. What? You said play with the rim, right? Play with the rim. Only with the tongue. What? What? And then where do they put their cock? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right. All right. All right. So, <laughs> so it was just a dope time. Thank y'all for coming out. You didn't man. go this time. Say what? You didn't go this go time. Where? No, we went to a shitty. Oh, we went to a shitty strip club. Um, shout to shout to Daniel Torado, co comedian, very funny from yeah, out there, but rocking in New York City, and he's from there. So he was like, "Yo, we should go to this other one called Kingdoms, right?" Okay, sounds gay. Yo, the irony, right? England was a kingdom, right? India's Kama Sutra. Right, right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and right. the kingdom came over, yeah, you know, and did right, their thing. Right. And probably made shit fucked up. Yeah. yeah we go to fun. kingdom, right? Yeah. First of all. Prices all fucked up. Prices are fucked Everything up. Everything taken out of the club. Son. All of a sudden, everything looks mad destitute. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> yeah. left. How the fuck are these roads dirt? Covered up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Covered up. Yo, let me ask you all a question. I just, this just hit me about Gandhi. You know how he did like a hunger strike? Mm hmm like, ain't there no food there anyway? <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> right? Like
like, like, oh, you know, like, you, you know that the English people, this is just hit me right now. You know, like, the English people, you know, the whole world's like, England, how could you be doing this to India? You know, English people are probably like, but they aren't eating anyway. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? What is this? It's crazy. Oh, <sighs> right? But there was, there is something to that. He was a lawyer. He, he could have done all right. He could have had food. Ah, because he could have. But a lot of the country was starving. I don't know how poor it was then. I know they had money for England. Right. And then I think we, things really got bad because the population just exploded and then everything was infrastructure and all that was fucked. All right, fair enough. Yeah, all where, I'm saying where does Gandhi rank on like your hero number list? Number one. Oh, yeah? Number like one. straight up? Close. Number wow. one. Gandhi over Jordan, I don't give a fuck. I'll oh. buy a Gandhi jersey right now. Does he have a jersey? Yeah. That'd be dope. I never had to show you with a shirt that had little Gandhis on it. Yo, that's a good ass point. I had How do you think Gandhi would feel about the way you dress? He would love it, dog. Yeah? yeah. You dress like you found your shirt. <laughs> like, like, like you would just walk into the podcast and you were on a subway and you're like, oh, I didn't wear a shirt today? <laughs> and, and, yo, what's this? What's this? Why are you acting like this shirt ain't fire? Yo, Why are you acting like, can I tell you a real story about this shirt? This is an old ass shirt. I've had this for four years. I can't afford new shirts. But I remember- yo, stop making us feel bad. Look at this Gandhi ass way of thinking. You <laughs> see that shit? No, it's a struggle. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is how dope the shirt is. There's right. one dude, I wore it on Brilliant Idiots once. Okay. And one dude has messaged me. I he stopped recently, but it took about a year straight of messages like, "Yo, fam, where you get that shirt?" <laughs> For a year, yo, yo, legit, a year, dog. Gay? <laughs> like, you know what? He, he was, was answering them no, every time. No, too. no I was like, no, you want to know? Answered. You want to know why? I'm not giving away my motherfucking <laughs> no, shopping no, secrets. No, no. You want to know, know why? You want to know why? You wanted to know where he got the shirt because it was his. You found that <laughs> shit, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 a motherfucker was playing ball. Took. Shirt sure off so he gets sweaty. Our guy's walking to the podcast like, damn, I forgot a shirt. How am I supposed to go on the podcast with no shirt? See the dude hooping, snatch that shit, oh, put fuck. it on. We good. Oh, fuck. That was good. Crazy was ass, good. motherfucker. That was good. Anyway, we had this shitty ass strip club, son. There were two girls dancing. Two girls. There's like 50 fucking dudes in the place. The place was packed. It, it was, it's like, it's like being in life. Hmm. Drake gave that country too much confidence, man. These hoes all trying to be all saved now. Anyway, don't go to kingdoms. If you're there, go to whatever. All right. You know what I mean? Should we start talking some sports? Yeah. All right, Akash. What do we got, man? What do you? Man, I still don't have real sports stories. NFL training camp started. Okay. Uh, here's something I think we can talk about with two different sports crossing over. You, the the CJ McCullough. Can you explain what happened with this with CJ McCollum and Kevin Durant? So I guess C.J. McCollum has a podcast. Kevin Durant came on it. Okay. C.J. McCollum asked me a couple questions about the Warriors, and I think they went back and forth. And okay. then I think C.J. McCollum said he didn't really like it or whatever, and he hoped he was pissed they got boogie, I think. Uh, if I fuck up any details, I don't care. And uh, <laughs> I'm not a reporter. Exactly. I'm not a reporter. I'm an asshole. Um, Yo, great. And then Kevin Durant That's said a shirt. something like uh, – <laughs> Kevin Durant says something. Like, I'll find that one too. Kevin Durant says something like, uh, "Who y'all ain't gonna win the championship anyway? Who cares?" And then they joke back and forth, whatever. Then CJ McCollum answers a tweet that says, "Like, can we call Kevin Durant a bitch for going to Golden State?" And then CJ McCollum quote tweeted and said, "I think the B word is a little strong, but I definitely think it was soft. It's like uh, he stayed. If, I think he should have stayed with OKC. It's like you and your boys get jumped by a gang, and then instead of fighting that gang with your boys, you go join that gang." Yeah, there's a saying yeah. called, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> right? Like, this is, this is like how the world, that's why, like, a lot of people speak the same language. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, sure, I guess. Right? But do, do you not think it was a bitch movie? Do you not think that's an apt parallel? Like, you were up 3-1. I mean, three, one. every country that, like, Muhammad Are took Are you going to make this imperialistic? Are you going to make this sports? Well, isn't, like, sports a metaphor for war? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Only for losers and fucking do- people who've never been in war. You know who would never say some shit like that? A veteran. Yo, nobody so, nobody yo. watching the finals like, yo, this is just like Normandy. Yo, yo, <laughs> it's so true. Like, You know how like comics always go like, like comic. It's just like boxing. Yeah. It's like I've boxed. Never once <laughs> have I been like, this is like being on stage. It's, it's, it's no different. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> like, uh, so anyway. Kevin McCullough, or Kevin Durant responded to that and said something like, wow, after I just did your podcast, CJ, yeah. something, something, the snakes in the grass, boy, I tell you. So here's my question. And I haven't listened to the podcast, but if... Why would you? Facts. Kevin Durant, boring <laughs> ass. If, talk. if, 
if it's po- it, here's the thing. If CJ McCollum, motherfucker, wear his little brother sweatpants to the game, and I got Kevin Durant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My man, tall son. <laughs> yeah, I man. At the end of the day, he's tall. <laughs> so boogie, yeah. boogie gets pants that fit. That's true. Fucking ankle showing. Yeah, maybe he proud of his ankles because Kevin Durant really like his ankles because even his sneakers don't show off the <laughs> ankles. Kevin love his ankles. I think that's the, his favorite part of his body. Real talk. Anyway, um, his head looked like an ankle. <laughs> you ever look at his head shape? If you look at his head shape, you're like, that ain't a head. That's an elbow. What is that? That's different. All right. So if CJ McCollum told him that shit to his face on a podcast and quote tweeted it, yeah. that's fine. Right. It appears that like they were lovey dovey on a podcast. And then in this tweet, he's having they different energy. CJ McCollum said, I don't like it. Whatever he said prompted Kevin Durant to say, y'all ain't going to win the championship anyway. So there's obviously some friendly right. back and forth. But yeah. CJ McCollum was like, I I said that to him. I think it's soft. Yeah. I mean, he could absolutely say that. My feeling about CJ is like, y'all haven't won shit, so you don't really have an opinion. Well, they they put up a real fight in the playoffs. You know? Yeah, they so, did. Real so, fight. So Put up a, put up a real fight. But yeah. I do think it's a valid point. You're up 3-1. We've all talked. We've talked yep. about this to death. But you're up 3-1. If you don't have a terrible game five and six, if you have a good game either one of those games, y'all win. We can talk about Clay. We, we always blame it on Russ. But Kevin Durant had a bad game five and six. Go back and look at the shooting percentages or whatever. He yeah. had a good game. Does his recent play in in these series no remove that? No, never, never, never. So because you're doing it on someone else's team, not never, right. but you got to do it on your own. <clears throat> right, right, right. So we we can never. Hmm. So he'll he has to live with his career knowing that he'll never be credited as taking a team to the finals. Actually, as I say that, I, I remember what I realized about LeBron, which is we've been trying to write this guy's legacy for 10 years now or whatever the fuck. Okay. And a career is long. Like, he's – Kevin Durant could play 20 years. So who the fuck knows how he's going to end up in the history books? So that's another question I have. Um, how long will these NBA players be able to play? I feel like careers are starting to stretch out. Oh, for sure. Nutrition is better. Technology is better. Yeah. Science is smarter about They recover about from this. injury better. Like, back in the day, ACL, you're done. Yeah. Right? And now it seems like you bounce not back. all injuries, but a lot of injuries. And it's a softer game. I wonder softer if that game is. is a good point. I wonder if that's it. That's like, part look, of it for look sure. Look at the beat up AI used to take. I wonder if he would just get his beat up in the league now, or maybe maybe it would be different. Now that's that is interesting, but there's it's definitely softer, so there's less okay. wear and tear in the body, and then two, the recovery is better. How they handle their bodies, like the players, like it's conceivable to me. LeBron plays till he's forty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Barring any major setback, like maybe a back injury, you know how that shit we don't really know how to handle. Right, right. But like you could see LeBron playing on a team. He's gonna play with his son. That's gonna happen. So he whether or not he'll be effective, I don't know. But he'll play with his son. Seven years, whatever the fuck it is, done. I think there's something to it, and I think it might. It's like you know, how guys who play hockey can play forever. I didn't know that. Oh, oh Jeremy <laughs> Ronick, or not Jeremy Ronick, Jeremy Yager, Yager or something. Motherfucker, played. like 50 years yeah. old, keep playing. Yeah. Now, granted, they're playing in spurts. They're playing like 60 second spurts. Right. They're doing right. that kind of shit. But at the same time, there must be something about the way that we're taking care of our bodies now <laughs> and the sure. treatment that we're getting. He, LeBron apparently spends a million dollars a year on his body. Damn. Think about how worth it that is. Oh, of course it's worth it. Right? Because you but write like, that off with every new contract. If if you if your new contract is $200 million, yeah, he's got 196. You spent after, yeah. four million yeah. to get 200. Yeah, 100. percent It's so worth it. I mean, the guy's brilliant. Yeah, but I just think we can't write Kevin Durant's legacy in all like reality. So because he plays so long, you're like, we don't know if he's gonna join. He could join the fucking Wizards. And if the Warriors yeah, win yeah. fucking 10 straight and he gets Finals MVPs the rest of the way, you gotta, you gotta. Give at it some up. point, you're just gonna relent. You gotta you're gotta like, give it all up. right, sure, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, no, no, that's that's fair. Furthermore. If an amazing team in the East, which is very possible, yeah. if Boston, Philly, yo, if Boston or Philly, check it, if Boston or Philly pushes the Warriors to a game seven yeah. and Durant plays well, that means he was needed for that victory. Right now, there's this illusion that, like, without Durant, they'd still win. And Durant I don't is extra. I necessarily think that. <clears throat> is it possible that, like, some people subscribe I think to that? that. Some people subscribe to that. I mean, here's what I think. Because the argument is you went to a 73-9 and team. Here's what I think. Okay. I think you can get a complimentary piece that can take you over the top. That's essentially what Kevin Durant – he's not a complimentary piece, but that's the kind of thing you do. We got a team that's right on the cusp, and then we signed this defensive stalwart who's a fucking – 
stalwart like ben wallace or whoever yeah yeah what's like, a stalwart this is a gay person uh <laughs> i don't but know no, but what is it it's like when you show know. your dick to people when you pee <laughs> Um, I actually don't know the. It, I just know it in a sentence. It's just somebody who's a stopper. Stalwart. Yeah. It's or like worth. a wall. Uh, w a r t. I think. Stalwart. Yeah. Yeah. S t a l. And I'm just it's a wall. trusting my Indianness here. S t a l w. Oh shit! Yeah, you got to be able to spell. Oh, I got to. That's pressure, what's up. Pressure, please don't let that be wrong. But uh, yo, if you said like Ben Wallace, Dennis Rodman for the '97 Bulls. That right there. Yeah. These sneakers. Mm-hmm. It's a pussy stalwart. That's a that's a wall. <laughs> yeah, it ain't getting none. Oh, it's stopping oh, it. Oh, it's stopping the pussy. I don't even know if I use that oh, correctly. Oh but... shit! You don't know what these sneakers are in here, son? I'm still trying to find this word. <laughs> <laughs> these are the build the wall for, son. He <laughs> 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 didn't know, son. <laughs> these the build the wall for. Yeah, All right, go on, go on. I like uh, how you didn't call your man out when he was backpedaling. On that Russia shit. Who? Uh, your man Trump. What What? What exactly happened? First of all, it's not my Who man. Who gives a Stop fuck? It. I don't want to talk politics in this fucking yeah, podcast. Yeah, exactly what no, I started. Some, not but sometimes he gets bigged up when he, like, does, he doesn't okay, act Okay, you want to know the reality of the matter? We'll very quickly address this. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. And, and then this is then we're really quickly out of here. I wanted any U.S. president to go into a meeting and then pull their fucking dick out. Yes. Like, I didn't want that nice, fluffy shit. I loved when he went to NATO and he was like, yo, pay the fuck up. You know, he went in there like Avon Barksdale. I want my money. I want my corners. Let's fucking go. I did like that. Also. I wanted that shit. Yeah. I wanted that shit for Putin, too. I wanted him to show up like, you know, like, yo, we ain't buddy, buddy. You know what I mean? Like, we could be cool if you respect my gangster. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I wanted. And he didn't do it. And it was too cutesy and too buddy, buddy. That being said... The American policy towards Russia right now, much harsher than the last two administrations. So if we're going to act in terms of like, uh, what are those things called? Tariffs. Not only tariffs. Um, sanctions. sanctions. Sanctions and all that kind of shit. Treatment, yeah. much harsher. So if we're going to go, oh, he's on their side, well, then I guess Obama was really on their side. And then Bush before that was really, really on their side because they were much more lenient on Russia. That's all. I'll, that's all I have to say about. It. Anyway, back to what we're saying. We'll talk after the pot. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I couldn't care less about politics. I know, I know. That's why we do this to I not know. talk about. It's it. a politics-free zone. My bad. So it's so free. <laughs> show us your feet. Real talk. Show us your feet. <laughs> you gotta show us your feet now. No, hey, you gotta show us your feet. I'm not you taking, gotta make man. up for it, bro. Let me see them you gotta mother, motherfucking make up for it. That's it. He starts fucking black girls. He think he could tell me who I am. No. You know what I mean? No. You know, that's his girl think getting, he could talk me. That's his girl getting in his ear. You need to check yeah. your boy. That's right. Oh, he's over here bigging up Trump. Listen, you know this. And then one. finally he's like, all right, baby, goddamn. Yeah. I'll do it. Shit. She yeah. might have, she might have Little did something. she know. I <laughs> told you. <laughs> Little did she know. I've been fucking with these black girls. I ain't a newbie like you. Okay? This motherfucker over here. Can you believe it? This guy over oh. here handing out visas to European bitches. <laughs> this motherfucker over here, bro. Wow. This motherfucker over here. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Look what you done did, yeah, Alex. Look what you done that's did. That's why he really upset wait, because wait, wait, that's why wait, he wait, 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 wait. Because Russia probably putting pressure on his bitch's country. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's what it is. You know, you got your bitch like, please oh, tell, man. please be angry at the Putin because he's taking my family's money, he's taking my family's resources. We have, we have, oh, we have small goat farm in my country and Putin's <laughs> coming attacking all the goats please oh, help man. us Alex on your podcast oh, with man. your influence they're, please they're you oh, know, Andrew's a comedian for a reason yeah, yeah. I'm a comedian <laughs> you know what I mean please Alex I cannot go back after I've been blue chewed it's not the same <laughs> <laughs> Alex please keep me in country keep. S- spe- <laughs> speaking of which we got a bit roll oh yeah we do but after Akash finishes point alright I remember what I was saying. I was having fun, and then fucking just got hopped in <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere. Where did that shit even come from? What was the segue? <laughs> I don't remember. Man, Something can we said. not? That shit is enough on Brilliant Idiots. I get tired of reading y'all's fucking tweets about it. All right, so All check right. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and we're going to pay some bills, but we got to do it in a way that only the Flagrant 2 podcast is going to do. Because with Blue Chew out there, that means that we have Blue Chew testimonials 
Okay. I'm gonna use this time to piss. Why don't you go pee? But I want you to hear some of these. Hear oh, some. Hear some of them and then go pee. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for this. This one comes from Edmund Rubasha. Is that Indian? I don't think so. Edmund. No, nah, he black. Okay. <laughs> Blue Chew testimony. Last this week. This is going to be a Trump rant. Last week. This girl made him right. I chewed up this one chick here in Santa Monica, then took a shower with her. And as soon as we got done, I drove a few blocks away to another chick's house, chewed her up, then spent the night. Two days later, I chewed this other chick I've been banging for a while, and she literally couldn't take it, and she's a divorcee with a 10-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> What a detail. Yo. Yo, what a detail. Think about that shit oh, right man. there. She squeezed a kid out, but she couldn't take the chew. Nah, she couldn't. Nah. I, told, I told you it makes it bigger. Hey, man. That should make your dick dilate. <laughs> <laughs> I told her it's because I've been working out a lot. Just got my second order in the mail yesterday. If they die, they die. <laughs> oh, man. We are changing lives on this podcast. This is from, I forgot this, I don't have this guy's exact name. Just made a bish come back on her period off the two. <laughs> Yo, oh my God. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my God. Women are mad savvy with that shit. Yo, these chicks are so smart. Chicks know they on their period, right? But they still want to get some dick. So they'll say they're not. Then you start fucking them and they start bleeding. You're like, you must have put my period back on. You savvy. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I've got hit with that. Come on, yo. They smart. They fucking smart with it. All right. Ready? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. This is a trill, babe. All right? If you want, I'll do an audio recording of our Blue Chew experience because that shit is the truth. Anyway, thank you for being great and reading this. Here's another one. This is from Pearl. Oh, hey, I know you wanted to hear from a woman. This is about lady asshole. And I must say it was awesome. Me and my guy have been together for almost 10 years. And I've been trying to get more into our sex life since it's faded by either becoming swingers, having a threesome someday, or whatever else to revive it. All right, Blue Chew might have done this man a disservice, to be honest with you. No, no, he's, she's like looking for things. Like, I know. We oh, do? I know. It took all that shit oh, right yeah, off the yeah, table. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Dick's so good, you lost a threesome. <laughs> We both listen to Flagrant. Myself, when I'm at work as uh, as an accountant, and he listens on the road. And he told me one day he bought something special, and it's from a podcast. I knew it was the Blue Chew. And when he finally came back from driving, we tried it out, of course, since you have been hyping it up. And it definitely got the job done. Best sex ever wow. out of 10 years. Wow. Yo. He was able to last Yo. longer and go second rounds. His dick felt bigger because it started <laughs> Which it normally doesn't. I don't know if it increases stamina, but he was able to do positions we ain't never tried in our life. Thanks, your big fan. Cam. It's the limitless pill for your dick. Bro, you know, that's what it's a limitless is. pill for your dick. <laughs> Fucking facts, man. All I'm trying to say is you already know what time it is with the blue chew, okay? You guys know when you're ready to go. You're ready to make it happen. There are times where you could do having sex quite embarrassingly. Alex, I didn't tell you about this, but I came very quick with a girl. Quite recently. I mean... I Did I tell you or I didn't tell you? Nah, but I mean, that is typical of you, though. Nah, I'd be stroking. When you want to. But a lot of times you kind of just, you know... Yo, you ever, like, try... You take it to the limit, but then it went too far? In what way? Because you know, I like, might have... Like, when you're like, oh, I'm about to nut, but you're like, nah, I'm not going to nut. I got it. I could be there. I could hold it back. Oh, yeah. It's like those Russian kids that hang off the skyscrapers. <laughs> and every once in a while, one of them falls, right? And it's like, oh... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's how it is when you come. When like you're like, nah, I could let me get one more oh, stroke. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? like, okay, okay. Like you always you try to get one more. You always think you got one more stroke, son, right? It's like you fucking you feel it about to happen. You're like, nah, I got this last one. And on the way in, you good. But on the way out, yep. it t- you falling off the skyscraper. And then you don't even enjoy it because you're so worried about getting all of it so out I, real quick and oh shit. God, <laughs> that's the worst. All the way out. And then I, I, what I do is I pull it all the way out, and then I hit it with like two deep-ass meditative breaths to try to keep it coming. <laughs> like I'll just be like. 
And sometimes that will do us to do it, <laughs> but sometimes it won't. Bro, this time it did not. I felt horrible. You know what I did? Sure. I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom, clean off my dick. What did I do? I went to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh yeah! Chew that, oh, yeah. that shit up. By the time I got back to the room, she dressed. She left. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I did? I jerked off all night. <laughs> <laughs> a win is a win. Smile, bitch. <laughs> I was I was wondering too, cause I'm like, damn, you gotta give that shit a little while to kick in and uh, shit. <laughs> uh, we out, bro. We out. Was, I'm good. Our cars right back. Yeah. All I'm saying is, Blue Chew <laughs> brings you the first chewable with the FDA-approved active ingredients to get that dick hard as fuck, last long as fuck. Also, they're chewable, right? So they work up to twice as fast. When you just swallow the pill, it takes time for your system to break that shit down. Put this in the mouth. <laughs> get that dick hard. We're with the quickness, okay? Also, you don't have to go to the doctor to get the prescription. You could do that shit all online. That's what everything's working like online. It was stupid. We actually had to go into a doctor and then tell them the symptoms. Back yeah. Like it made no. Hey, my knee hurts. Okay, you should go see a knee doctor. It's like now. Hey, listen, I want to rock a girl's fucking world, make her period drop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a mustard beat. <laughs> Yo, real talk. So, Blue Chew, made in the USA and shipped direct. So they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. All right, visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free. Y'all remember the last time we did that, right? And they sold the fuck out. So get on this right now. If you listen to this podcast bright and early on a Tuesday, get on that shit right now, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, beat the we, rush. We be selling them out, okay? All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's nothing, okay? Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com, okay? The promo code is flagrant. Flagrant. Put that promo code in. Make sure you support your boys over here on this podcast. Okay? One important thing to mention. What's that? It doesn't fuck your dick up. Oh, because yeah. I used to be like afraid to ever take like Cialis, Viagra, any of those things yeah, because yeah, I yeah. thought it was like you use it one time and oh, then you're gonna need it. Like, yeah, nah, 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 nah. <clears throat> Your dick works perfect after. Yeah, sometimes use it, sometimes don't. It's a, it's a fun fucking experience, right? This is what we all do. We go drink, we go to the bar, we have a fun time. Sometimes people do a little bit of drugs for a fun time. Sometimes you take a a dick pill and go tear your girl shit up. The chew is on. That's all I'm saying. It's dick enhancement. Yo, real fucking talk. So It's um, not for erectile dysfunction. It's for better erectile function. Oh, it's a steroid. It's a steroid. It's, it's a legal steroid. steroid. No it's long-term HGH. We're going to call it HDH. Yo, that's okay. great. Human dick hormone. That's great. Is that what fucking. HGH is? All I'm saying is go handle that shit. You already know where to get it. You already heard the feedback. You already know it's going to sell out because that's what the fuck we do over here. We don't play no goddamn games. And... um. You know how to support, you know how to support us. That's really what it comes down to, man. That's what we, you know, Akash and I um, talk quite a lot during the week. You know, one of my best friends, besties, my best friends in the whole world, my best friend in comedy. You know what I mean? Alex and I talk a lot over the week. One of my best f- friends in video production. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where is he? <laughs> Probably my best friend in video production. <laughs> top three for sure. Definitely top three. Yeah. It's you. So. <laughs> 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 nah. So, and we talk about, we often talk about this podcast and what's so fun about it. What's, I think the people tend to love so much about it, which is it's this raw, unapologetic conversation. And what that shit does is it makes everybody at home that has these kind of conversations with their friends and exists in this world with their close people that they trust, right, exists in that world and acts normally in that world. When they hear us doing it on a public forum, they're like, oh, I am normal as well. Yeah. We we live in this PC fucking world that you can't say anything. If you said something 20 years ago, it's being held against you. Everybody's trying to tear you down, all this shit. And I think what we offer is this solace that, no, not everybody's caught up in that shit. Nope. Some of us do not give a fuck about that PC nonsense. It's kind of quiet our... Fuck about quiet our speech, quiet our jokes, quiet our joy. Yeah. At the end of the day, why are you PC, taking away my fun, my happiness? Real talk. At the end of the day, PC shit will take away your fucking joy, bro. Bruh. So it's a terrible world. And what we've been thinking about are ways where we can maintain this no matter what. Yeah. Because the first thing that they go to 
is they try to hit your advertisers. They try to hit. They try to hit you where it hurts in your pockets, yeah. right? That's the first thing all these these producers do. Like that guy did those tweets from ten years ago. The first thing they're doing is Disney. Are you gonna allow this? Da, 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 yeah. You're gonna allow this. So we've been thinking of ways, and we ask you, you know, you guys for your um, feedback on this as well. But we've been thinking of ways where we can maintain the flagrancy, grow the flagrancy, and continue the flagrancy. And if an advertiser says, "Hey, this isn't for us," then we go, "All right." Yeah. We already good. Yeah. We got the direct relationship with our fans, okay? We have that connection. When we bring on a, a thing to advertise, when we bring on a sponsor, we're doing that and that we are helping the sponsor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we are helping the sp- we sold out Blue Chew. Right. Like Blue Chew ain't buy me a house. It ain't buy you a house. You no. know what I mean? We're grateful for that partnership because we believe in a product, but at the same time, we want to create something it's completely independent from any. We don't want to be worried about how we any- say something and then everybody starts tweeting. Oh, how could you yeah. support this person? And then we need that support, so we got to dilute the product for y'all. Yeah, we're not gonna dilute shit. Matter of fact, we can't wait till somebody says, "Oh my God, you hear what they're saying?" And then they try to take away sponsors, and we go, "So cool." We good. Yeah. We got the army. Yo. Okay? We got the army, the army supporting us. So we're thinking about ways where we can have a direct connection with you guys. Where maybe it means we put out a little bit more content. Maybe it's something like a, a Patreon that we have for, for those subscribers. But we want to grow this shit and we want to have the direct connection with you guys. Um, if that's something we think that you guys would support, you know, you could absolutely let us know. But the point is, we're not going to be silenced by nobody. We're going to keep being flagrant out here. We're going to keep having fun and having joy. And if it's for two hours a fucking week, honestly, it could be the best two hours of my week. This is so fun. I, I could walk out of here like, yeah. yo, this is what we do? Yo. God bless. This is a, the safe space for unsafe people? Yes, it is. Don't ever forget it. Anyway, so that's that. And if you guys have any uh, feedback you want to share with us, I know a lot of you guys operate in these businesses. A lot of you guys have ideas. You know, I've you know, had conversations with, with you after shows or even on Twitter and Instagram. And to be honest with you, they've been very fruitful for me because a lot of the ideas that you guys bring up with – whether you believe it or not, have been implemented in not only this podcast, but Brilliant Idiots and that kind of stuff. So don't sell yourself short. One thing I've always been proud of in terms of my 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 supporters is that I respect them. You know, there's certain, I think, musicians that they're like 30 years old and they're entertaining 12-year-olds. Right. And it's like, that's got to suck. Yeah. To have a fan base you don't even respect and you want to no. engage with. And one of the cool things about the podcast that I've... I've been lucky enough to be involved with in the curation of fans that, that we is like they're pretty interesting minds. Yeah, they want to be provoked. They want to think differently. They're independent thinkers. Independent thinkers. Truly independent thinkers. There we go. So it's I I value your opinion or at least your takes. So if you guys have some interesting takes, some interesting ideas, yo, throw them over, and I'm gonna chew on them. <laughs> <laughs> Alex will chew on them. Akash will. Kaz will. And um, and we're gonna think of something special, man, and change this fucking game because that's what we're all gonna do. We're always changing the game. It really comes down to that. All right, let's get back to this sports shit. All right, well, here's what I want to talk about because here's so KD, we didn't get to finish. Yeah. His response was the media is always making me look like some bitch, like I'm super sensitive. Yeah. And I wanted to be like fuck him, but then I saw this Des Bryant thing. Y'all seen what happened with Des Bryant? Can you explain? Um Okay, I've just been following the Dak thing, but, like, talk to the Des Bryant So thing. this Des Bryant, this clip comes out. Sirius XM, uh, NFL or whatever, their XM yeah. channel, uh, they put out a tweet from Stephen Jones, who's, like, the VP of the Cowboys, and he says something. The tweet they said is, like, I think Dak is going to be better because this year he won't have Des in his ear, and he's a year older. A year, year older and he won't have Des in his ear or something, right. which isn't the full quote. The full quote is he won't have guys – who really always want the ball like Dez and Jason Witten because those great players, they demand the ball. They want the ball because they're great players. That's what he said. The tweet didn't put all that out, obviously. They just put out Dez is in Dax here, and I think he's going to be better without him. So they cut the Witten part. So so Dez goes crazy on Twitter. Cut the great player part. Dez goes crazy on Twitter. Now, this is on him. But I see how the media will do this shit. Also happened to Dez one time with Jameel Hill. That's why I don't fuck with Jameel Hill. Uh, There's a story, Dez... Tipped like $150 or like a Blaze pizza or some sh- crazy shit like that. $50, okay. some crazy tip. Shout to Braun. And then um, the waitress tweeted, Dez just tipped me this, but I'm still an Eagles fan. I still hate the Cowboys or something like that. And then Dez quote tweeted it and was like, well, guess I won't be eating there anymore, LOLOL, or whatever. Like, it's a joke. Then a news article comes out and it says, Dez Bryant boycotts Blaze pizza. 
Jamil, Jamil Hill, a journalist who defends black players when they get unfairly portrayed in the media, mm -hmm. doesn't read the article, quote tweets it, and then makes it about kneeling at the anthem because Dez wouldn't kneel. And then she was like, oh, but he won't boycott the... Never mind. And then everybody starts uh, retweeting and going at Dez. And then Jamil Hill is like, no, he knew it was a joke. Everybody knows I was joking. No, we didn't. And now you see... And I can see, I still think what KD did was a bitch move, but that made me see, like, yeah, the media really does do whatever the fuck they want, and people run with it, and then you got to deal with all that bullshit. Yeah. And and when do you think they do it most? When you're low. Oh, and not only when you're low, but this time right now. Oh, when there's no sports. Yes. Yeah. If right. you guys notice, just read up on ESPN, read up on these things. When there's no real sports actually going on, Yeah. they still got to create news. They're not funny enough to go away from sports. They don't got jokes. No. They don't got content. No. Right? They tried to do sports chewed. science. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, you don't care how much pressure is on your calf. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you swing a baseball bat. Like, nobody gives a fuck. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, here's the here's the quote. Thank you, Al. Um, Alex's timing is perfect. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why you'd be leaving nuts in. <laughs> I thought I didn't come. Oh, damn. <laughs> it's it's okay. <laughs> we can have baby and, and bring <laughs> bring baby into life. And I can stay here and raise baby with you. Y'all Yo. so wonder how we got go that Rake of Vodka sponsorship. <laughs> that was Alex's <laughs> ex, fam. <laughs> Icelandic ass bitch. All of a sudden, we just got ads. I was like, how are we going to fucking vodka ad? I don't even drink from Iceland. Now I know. Alex, please sell this vodka because oh, if you don't sell this vodka, they will kill my entire family. Please. Please. All I, all I ask for you is please selling vodkas. Oh, man. It's very harsh country. Oh, man. Fuck. Shout out to my 8% Ireland, man. Yo, oh. Wales. It's, it says Ireland, Scottish, and Wales. Oh, yeah. It's all the same people. Yeah. So yeah. Shout out to them. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Anyway. Uh, okay. Back to what, what, what so we're saying. So the tweet. Yeah. Do we need to talk about the tweet? Do we read it? No, no. We already said yeah. it. All right. But, but what was the... Um, the way oh, they oh, do yeah. shit when the sports so, time is so when, there, so when there's nothing happening in sports, everything is, you know, um, hypotheticals. Everything gossip. is gossip. It becomes... Gossip, gossip, and gossip. And who gossips the most? Housewives. Why? Because they got nothing to do. Ooh. When there's nothing going on, we all, human nature, we just cling to gossip. That's everybody. I'm not singling out anybody. That's us. Yeah. And there's no sports and a network that can only do sports and doesn't know how to do anything else. They're going to find the gossip in sports. And I, I, I'll fuck with it. I'm interested in it. I'm not going to act like I'm above it. But they're going to really focus on this shit and stir it all up because they got nothing else. Right. This is two days worth of news for ESPN. Without this, they have nothing. So think about that. This is what's genius. It's almost like a Bond movie, <laughs> right? Like, I think there was a Bond movie about this. You create the narrative. You create a fake narrative. Yeah. Right? The players react to fake narrative. Then you talk about uh, the, the players, players yeah. reacting to your invented yeah. narrative. 100%. You just got three different that's days great, of yeah. news. Yeah, that's a great breakdown. That's a perfect breakdown. But isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Now, Dez should know better. Don't fucking go nuts. Listen, see what's going on. Personal accountability. You look Absolutely. like an asshole, but I see how it drives you crazy. And I can see how as much as I hate Kevin Durant going to uh, the Warriors, and I think a lot of shit he responds to is bitch type shit yeah. or whatever, yeah. I, you start seeing this and you're like, oh, I see why they hate the media, and I kind of see why it happens. If motherfuckers are just putting out fake stories about me all the time and cutting up news, I'm going to go nuts every once in a while. Did you notice the article? Uh, did you see that uh, conversation um, with uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Tom Brady? It was a... It was. It wasn't a press conference, but it was at the training camp. And one of the reporters said, "Hey, you know, you heard about Edelman's, you know, uh, four-game suspension for right. the PEDs. Uh, some people are saying that he might have gotten those from uh, Guerrero's, your trainer." Yeah. And Brady just goes, "That's ridiculous." All right, guys, I'm out of here. He just leaves because he knows yeah. that's a fake story yeah. that they're trying to right. implant. They're yeah. waiting for him to get. A statement so yeah. they can run with the statement. And even no comment is a comment to the reporters. It's like, I oh, mean, you won't look, comment. I'm on talking it. about right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But We're well, having yeah. a conversation right, right now. But that's a perfect example. You take two things that got nothing to do with each other. Yep. Yes, there's a trainer. Yes, there's an athlete that they happen to coincide. And there's a big story about Guerrero's not being liked within the Patriots. So you know you're, of course. you're touching on a sore subject. 
Dak and Dez, there was a lot of drama last year. You're touching on, you're touching that raw nerve. Said, Let's see if we can create a little yo, fire here. So, so it's similar to jokes. You know how, like, when oh, we have a yeah. joke, like, yeah. you just take two things that are unrelated, yep. and then you try to find a common thread between them. Yep. Right? This yep. happens with tons of different, you know, yep. material. But yeah, the only thing coming to my mind right now is the, the teachers fucking the kids joke, and then the school shootings thing right. that I have. Yep. Right? It's like these are two separate things that are happening at schools, and I try to bridge the gap and find something humorous between right. them. Right? And that's what's happening in the sports world. Hey, uh, Lonzo Ball is uh, uh, says he has a knee injury. You know, oh, the Lakers are trying to make a trade for Kawhi. Oh, maybe um, he the faked the injury. Da, 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 this, that, the other. Yeah. Now, um, wow, that's crazy. You really can't trust anything no. in the summer. Well, And, yo, you know the funny thing is, not to bring it back to, like, a political thing about Trump, but it's, like, to a certain extent, the idea that, like, news can be fake is a new concept. Yeah. News was real. News was just what it was. And now it's... Paralyzing almost because every article you read, you're like, do I have to fact check this? Is I used this to wonder. Really... Though, I was like, do y'all ever look at the name of the fucking website you're retweeting a story from? Yeah, yeah, yeah Democrats yeah. are pieces of shit. Dot com is obviously <laughs> gonna have pretty biased <laughs> news. I'm not gonna entertain this. You know what I mean? Like, no, no. no there's, there's too much. I don't know. It's. I think it is a real problem that we're having. I would even say it's a real problem that we well, I mean, we, you know, I don't want to get off sports too much right now, but it's even a problem that I think Netflix is is having, which is there's a paralysis that comes with too many options. Yeah. And I think that Netflix is becoming TV, meaning there are certain people that just don't have TV. Right. They have Netflix. Right. Now, Netflix isn't organized enough for the human brain. Right. TV was quite organized, right? It was this channel is about this. This, this is channel ESPN. is about that. This Home is sports. Yeah. This per- the learning this is channel. the learn this is the food channel, yeah. etc. And then all the content on there will be somewhat related. Now, yeah. Netflix has things you like, uh, uh things with a strong female lead, d- suspense. But the I made my girl get her own account when so that your when, shit don't when, fuck up. <laughs> when stories with a strong female lead became something I thought I was interested in, I was like, "Yo, that's enough. You no, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got it. Just make yeah. your own profile." Buy that's Sandra Bullock. That's too much. <laughs> that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucking emails about step up two and how I might be interested, and in. I was like, "This has got to stop now." <laughs> yeah, you off of mine. <laughs> there's so there's something too that I and I think what Netflix needs to do immediately is curate, have curators, right, and. You could do it automatically, or you could do it as a person. This idea will get stolen, and that's fine. You they steal all my ideas, so they're fifteen minute stand ups. Um, yep. So, but th- th- this is what they should have, in my personal opinion. You know how Apple Music has playlists. Mm-hmm. So Apple Music has all the music, right. but that's paralyzing. You go on Apple Music, you're like, "Whoa, what should I listen to?" Uh, Drake. Yeah. You know, you just how do how do you listen to new music? Yeah. Oh, get a playlist curated by somebody. That you respect, yeah, right, and they'll have some bangers on there, and also a couple new things that you might like, but you like that person's uh, say. Yeah. It's similar to like uh, a group of us. If you say to me, "Hey, you should check out this show on Netflix," and I know that me and you both watch Game of Thrones, me and you both yeah. watch Westworld, we love this movie, yeah. we like this sense of humor. Yeah. I trust your take. Yeah. So that's what Netflix needs. They need people or algorithms. To organize all that content because it's too fucking much. You know what it's similar to? Blockbuster used to have the fucking employees' picks. There's a whole Seinfeld episode about it. And that's what we used to trust that dude. You be- Oh, I fuck with this dude. All right. I like this. Let's Yo, do this. There's something to it. Netflix needs some employees picking. Uh, Real talk. I-, I hate when Netflix got rid of the rating system. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. You can still do it on the desktop, I found out. But there's. Oh, yeah. You can still see reviews and stuff. But yeah, oh, I, don't, I, didn't know I don't know what the point was of that. Oh. I mean, they're winning, so fuck me. Well, I got rid of it Amy Schumer's special got it one star. That's <laughs> serious. And she claimed it was like alt right people that were against her. You serious? Yeah. Oh, but shit. But so many people hated it because it sucked. And I don't <laughs> think there was any right ing in there whatsoever. I don't think there was <laughs> alt right I don't think there was joke writing. I don't think there was any. Writing whatsoever. <laughs> My girl was. She wanted to see what's that movie where she's a, a fat bitch, but she feels beautiful. All of every them? movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, right. no, I feel pretty. And she was like, "This looks funny." I, and the, from the previous, like, "All right, fair enough, we'll go see it." Both of us were like, "This is so brutal." 
It, it's fucking. I like, tried to get through like twenty minutes. Of that. It's brutally yeah. bad. It is bad. Well, point is, I think that's what they're they're definitely going to need. They're going to need curation, dude. Yeah. It, and it's the only way to organize all that data. Because now when you look, it used to be back in the day, like, this is a Netflix original it TV show. It used to show. mean something. I was saying, remember that, but dun I was like, yo, that's the new HBO. But now mm-hmm. when you when you hear HBO, you're like, oh, shit, this is going to be hot. Netflix, I thought curated. the same thing for a bit, it's but small. now it's everything is a Netflix Netflix has original. 30 fucking shows that are brand new, and you're like... Oh my God! This is too much. Yeah, they're gonna drop fifty comedy they're, specials. How you take the special out of a comedy special? Son, fifty, dude. It is so. That that's, shit is a regular. That's a regular. <laughs> a, that's good. There's a uh, yeah. There's something to be said. You know, I was when I was up at uh at Montreal. I did a a, a TV taping for uh, Kevin Hart's LOL. Right. Comedy festival. And I did I did old jokes that people have probably seen online. I did the women food joke and right. I did the uh it's a great joke. The the pho joke, the uh pho, right, the, right, the enemy's right. food joke. And um because the rules were anything that you do, they own for two years. You mm. can't do anywhere else for right, two right, years. Right. And it was my first time doing a TV taping and it's funny that how things have changed once I started putting stuff out and really right. put, did that push, but um I'll, t- I'll tell you something about TV. I understand why comedy sucks on TV. And I think I understand why my clips have had so much success. What's that? The audience for TV tapings feels too responsible. Oh. I'm up there and I'm performing and they can't wait to clap. And they're like interrupting jokes halfway because the second they hear anything clever that they think is the punchline... They yeah. start clapping, right, right? Right, 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 right. And throws your timing off. It's like watching a late night set. Like the audience starts clapping, and you're like, "Are we really doing this polite yeah, yeah. thing where you think you have to reward?" It's just, just laugh, just right. fucking laugh. And I realized it ruins the viewing experience because if the audience is clapping, and you didn't feel like it was that funny, it one throws the rhythm off of the joke, takes your energy away, takes takes the, the the viewer's energy away. Oh, I'm damn performer, yeah. And but and also the the tags that would go on the joke that would probably right. get you to chuckle at home alone. Yeah. Now they're stepped on by the, the clapping. After his time, yeah, everything's fucked. So, I put my clips mm-hmm. out when I shot my my special four four one or five five one, whatever you guys want to refer to it as. Nobody the the people in the, the comedy clubs, they didn't know. They had no idea they were being taped. Now, now we put things up. But they didn't know that they were being taped, and they didn't know it was a special. They didn't know they had to react a certain <coughs> way. They were just like, oh, somebody's filming today, but it's not like this means something. I have to really yeah. give it up and make it good because that's what they tell them. And if you look at great specials, I think a lot of them are filmed without people knowing. Can I be honest with you? Yep. I think the issue is not just – there's definitely pressure, but I think it's – the fact that we're shortening all the specials in that, I think that's a problem. I get why you're doing it. Attention spans suck. But I've been to, we went to Patrice's taping of his one hour special. Yeah. In an hour, you forget it's a special and you got to clap. You forget about five, ten minutes in because the guy's up there doing a full fledged performance. He's not pausing for clapter. He's doing his fucking thing. Yeah. I've been to a Chris Rock taping. I've been to a Patrice O'Neill taping. You forgot both times. In five minutes, I cannot forget. When I'm seeing comedian after comedian after comedian doing 10 minutes and there's fucking directors coming out with headsets and all that shit, yeah. then you remember. In an hour, you can forget, and that becomes very, and that's part of the special part of a special. Yep. It's an hour. You and forget. It's real. So I guess what I would say is, is that you can replicate that feeling in the hour in yeah. a shorter time. Without having the producers and the headsets yeah. coming on and all the, the you know, without making it feel false. Right. Because it feels fake. And then when we see it on TV, it is fake. It's fake. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to, I mean, I film pretty much every single show that I do that right. I can. You know right. what I mean? I, it's just a common thing for me to do. Right? right. It's not like if you come to one of my shows and you see cameras, it's like, oh, he's filming for a right. special. No, everyone that I can, Alex has filmed mm. numerous shows yeah, yeah. for me. Everyone that I can film and it's, it's entire, I do just I like having all that that material and just having all those experiences because you never know what I can use. But I promise you, in the future, I'll never be like, hey, we're going to do this and here are the producers yeah. with the headsets. And There's just going to be cameras and if it's a show that I really like and a cool experience, I'll find a way to put it out. Mm. But it was one of those things, Akash, and I'm telling you, I'm in there in the moment on stage thinking about it and I'm like, oh, this is why comedy sucks for two reasons. One, it's unnatural in that environment. Two, Comics are writing for that environment. 
Mm. They're writing one punchline that right. the, the audience claps at, like you said, clapter. Yeah. Instead of writing to punch them in the gut. Like right. if you watch clips of mine yeah. and yourself included online or you see us live, we talk through your laughter. Yeah. I'm not going da 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 and now you laugh and da 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 No, 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 no. I'm yo, this I gotta get the rest of this shit out. Yeah. You're gonna be laughing still. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. When you clap, it's not because you're like, that's so clever. You should clap because you're out of fucking laughs. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. when I'm watching Patrice and I'm clapping, I'm not like, oh, that was a really cute, clever line. I'm right. like, holy shit, give it like this that. motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, it was it, it was one of those things where like I, re- I really thought specifically to talk to you about it. It yeah. hit me in my fucking chest while I'm up there. I'm like, oh, this is trash. This is why. Yeah, it's too fucking canned. It's all fake. It's and people it's are writing TV. for it. TV's fake. That's why late night said by, suck. Comedy's essence is it's supposed to be real. The the essence of comedy is, I laughter is involuntary. Yeah, I am making you laugh. You can't help it, right? Yeah. Right? Like yeah, yeah. at this, how often do we get tweets and and DMs on Instagram that say, "I almost Just crashed my car. Yeah. I'm at work. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, about to get all in the trouble. Time, I almost crashed my car." Is maybe the most common. Yeah. R- response. I got a text from my good homie. Yo, you guys got to put up a warning or some shit. I almost crashed my car. Hmm. It's not even just random tweets. Think about how time. involuntary yeah. that is. Yeah. Your life is on the line, and <laughs> laughter is so involuntary, Yeah. right, that it would possibly kill you. Right. That's how involuntary laughter is, right? That's what we want to see and hear. If you, if you watch, I'm telling you, you watch my fucking, like, 441, that kind of shit, you're not going to hear, oh, here we go at applause break. Nah, we're we trying go. to catch bodies. Let's go. We're trying to catch bodies. That's my flagrant too. We're trying to catch bodies. There we go. If 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 she dies, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new uh, <laughs> uh, That's man. the new shit. She won't die, though, because women don't have good senses of humor. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, talking about women, we got to talk about the WNBA All-Star Game. Oh, that's right. That's right. The WNBA All-Star Game, also mm. known as the intramural f- uh, finals of any college, uh, <laughs> happened. And tell me what so happened. We, everybody clip. sent us a clip, yeah. and I didn't even everybody bother watching. Everybody sent us a clip. I watched a clip. Opening tip-off. They tip it. Right. And the both teams in their entirety go shoot on the wrong basket. <laughs> Right, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, can you believe this? Can you believe this?" Yes, women are bad with directions. There's, a, <laughs> you know I mean, like, of course I can believe it. Duh, like it's very obvious oh, why man. they do. It. So, yeah. but people started knocking them, and yes, we've seen this happen in men's basketball as well. And what do we do when we see it happen in men's? We make fun of it. Thank you. That's what we do. It's part of it. We live in some shit so sensitive right now. I think we forgot how progressive we used to be without bragging about it oh you, yeah you remember that show charmed vaguely it was oh. a show where there was these three uh witch bitches oh that's right that's right that's right it had yeah. the hose Alyssa milano and yeah somebody... i watched just because they were hot yeah, well, yeah. yeah. yo first exactly. of all men watched it right because yeah. they were bad i watched it right I, it was a f- they were... i didn't watch it you like didn't that, watch it but, but i knew it was of a show it, yeah. like you knew of it yeah. motherfuckers watched it right this shit took place in the 90s or 2000s or something i'm not exactly sure when it's three women beating up dudes every week being heroes every single week, there were no fucking think pieces about it. Yeah. There were no articles for New York Times breaking gender stereotypes. How, how could showing women and what they can do and so empowered. All it was Buffy the a- Vampire Slayer was killing fucking vampires, Yo. dog. Buffy a dope like show. Shit. Think about how, you know, I swear to God, we've gone the opposite. We act like when these new movie comes out, like Girl Ghostbusters comes out and they're like, it's breaking gender rule. No, we bit Charlie's Angels. We been had these fucking <laughs> TV shows and movies where women are busting ass. Wonder Woman is names. a remake son. from the fucking 70s TV show and a comic book that's probably even older son, than that. Son, it's all the old. This, I'm, I, I, I think about this all the time. I figured it out, son. I figured it out. It's a fake. This idea that like women aren't represented in this way is a fake narrative that people in Hollywood put out so that they could pat themselves on the back 
Right? It's no different than the sports story. It's I'm gonna start. Nobody this, believes in us. Right? I'm gonna start the I'm gonna start the idea, oh, okay, which is okay. fake. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, also yeah. nobody believes yeah, yeah. us to rally, right? But like I'm gonna start the idea, which is fake, that there's no representative of women being empowered in movies. Right? right? Here's this fake idea, right? I get women's organizations to buy on it and say how fucked up it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then I put out a women-led movie where they get to be empowered and strong and bust ass, et cetera, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then all those women's organizations and all the other people in the vlogs start going, how empowering, <coughs> how beautiful. This is the future. The future is female. Women been, been busting been, uh, ass. Dog, there was a TV Cat show. Catwoman, son. Lord. Dog, women in comedy. There was a TV show. Morphe Brown. Murphy I, Brown. I remember watching the show as a kid and being like, this bitch is hilarious. She was mean. She was a boss bitch. She loved getting hate mail. Didn't remember her co-worker's name. She thought nobody was as good as her. Fam. She wasn't a ditch. She was smart. She was just a badass lady, and there were no fucking blogs about it or rallies about it or, oh, what a fucking icon she is. Son, you know why? Because we respected her as an individual. I really didn't think of we, it as a woman-led we, show. Yeah, I was, we didn't she funny? treat her like a woman. Yeah. We treated her like the leading character of a show. Yeah. That's all she got treated as, right? And now you have to... Now we want everybody to be treated according to their identity, right? Everything is identity politics right, now, right? right? It's like if you're a leading person in gay, it's like this is a thing for the the gay community and all this. Shit. It's like back in the day, it's like okay, you're gay, you're not. We don't give a fuck. Is the show good? Yeah. Uh, 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 what's this? Omar, you out here sucking dick, but you still the coolest motherfucking character on the wire. I'm gonna be you for Halloween. Yeah. Like that's. I almost feel like we are forced now to look at everybody through this tiny lens yeah. of of their identity. I think about that a lot. With gay, I don't I think we came around on that being on not hating gay people pretty recently. Sure. But you but, understand what I'm yeah, saying. Right? I know like, what you mean. With women, with anybody. It wasn't it's we like, didn't sit there and fucking make a big hoopla about it. You, we could treat you much more equally back then and in a weird way. Because I think that we were I don't want to say we're blind to color or that kind of stuff. It's not we were blind to color or that that those things, but I think that we just wanted good shit. Yeah. We cared about good at the end of the day. There, it's coming back, but I remember wondering I was always like Remember for like five, eight years ago, they were trying to do diversity, but it would be like one mixed guy and one gay guy and one black guy and one white guy and then one from India. I was like, what is this forcing everyone onto the same thing? I remember in the 90s, there were black shows and they were fucking hilarious. Martin is a classic show. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, hugely impactful show. You didn't have to put one of everyone on there. It was just a funny show with black people, and we all just watched it yeah. and thought, oh, that's funny. We didn't sit there and celebrate that diversity of it or force them all onto one show. We just had our own shit and it was dope. Yeah. But we could all watch each other's shit. You know, it, I, is, it is true. We celebrate black shows now like they're new. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I don't even remember white shows. Carmichael. Back, back in the day, all, all I watched was Martin Fresh Prince. I don't. Uh, Carmichael like, is just unfunny. Wayne's Brothers. <laughs> is it? Is it? I never watched. No, I mean, it wasn't. Oh, that's right. Wayne's Brothers. Like this. Yeah. My mom I mean? and like, I used to watch the Wayne's Brothers every die. week. My mom is a fucking immigrant Indian lady. Dog, I'm trying to think of the white shows I watch. Charmed. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only one I can think about. Murphy Brown, boss ass bitch. That's true. Murphy Brown and what? And that cleaning bitch. Who's the boss? Not a cleaning bitch with an annoying ass voice. Come on, let's go over here, friend. Oh, the nanny. The nanny. Oh. Yeah, cleaning ass bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even this nanny was telling motherfuckers how to live the household and do that shit. What about yeah. like Seinfeld? I didn't watch that. But Seinfeld, Seinfeld really? was a white show. Son, I'm be honest with you, that shit was dumb overrated to me, bro. No, I he never liked Seinfeld. I, I love Seinfeld. Really? Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld. Seinfeld. And, Seinfeld. Now, here's the thing. My comedy IQ is way lower back then, right? Like, I like that show maybe now I'd appreciate the storylines and how they interweave and that kind of yeah. shit. But there were certain characters on that. Everybody was too uh, cartoonish for me. Like, Kramer, I was like, Why, what's that about, dog? Let's stop. Like... Yeah. What's that? Like, I just it. walk in the door, son. Like, why you got to make a thing about it? <laughs> you walk in my door like that every single time. Like, Jerry is the most nitpicky character in the world, right? Everybody, he breaks down the minutia of everything in life. Yeah. Why do we have salt to do this? And what's the, why wouldn't we do that? And why does a bed have to be next to the thing? And why wouldn't it go here? Why do we tie our shoelaces like da da da? But you're not going to ask why this tornado motherfucker walks into your goddamn apartment <laughs> no. unannounced every single day? You're not going to break that down for nothing? That's a good point. I fucked with the white shows. I fucked with black shows. Friends was a great show to me. 
Seinfeld's a great show to me. Martin was great. Freshman's is great. But I didn't know. I didn't even know. Like it, I didn't I, think about being diverse with it. It's just funny or not. Exactly. Yeah. It was like I, I didn't, didn't even, even realize know. friends didn't have black people until like People until a black making, person showed up. Yeah, until, no, until, until Gabrielle people, like, Union started, was in an episode, like, I was like, what's this black bitch doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, like, it was like when what's people different? started like saying it and like it was like fake outrage that, oh, Friends never has black people. And it was yeah. like, I didn't even notice that. Fam. Like it never even crossed my mind. I didn't even notice Fresh Prince didn't have white people. Yeah, I know. You just said that. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, Fresh Prince was a black show. There was no white people. I, I didn't even really notice. <laughs> like it was just like, you know what it was? Maybe we have so much content now we can really be more specific about what we watch. But back then it was just like, yo, if it's good, we're watching it. Exactly. Not everything yeah. was good. Yeah. So Friends was just good. Right, it was like Pete, I, didn't, I never watched it until college, but Friends was just good, and yeah. people loved that show. I found out how much people loved that show because when I was in college, the season, uh, the the series finale happened. Yeah. But it ha- I went to college in California, so the New York shit came out already. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, so yeah. I was in Cali, and I walked by the big room, you know, in the fucking dorms where everybody's watching the TV together, and I was like, "Oh yeah, blah 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 gets back with blah blah blah." I just ruined it for everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I just walked in and ruined it. I thought it'd be like a funny joke. I didn't realize motherfuckers spent 11 years of their life invested oh, yeah, in Rachel. For sure, for you sure. know what I mean? Oh, for sure. you're a dick. Yeah, you can't ruin Ross and Rachel, fam. Son, it was like I ruined Lost. <laughs> yeah, oh, yo, yo. Yo. That show sucks. Anyway. There's no but you know what I mean. Yeah. I guess my basic point is like, you just liked a good show or didn't like it a good didn't, show. There was, was no like, politics about exactly. it. Exactly. Now every show needs to be... I mean, I can't tell you how many times my agents will tell me, we think you're right for this character, but they're going with diversity. Yeah. Like, this is all the time they I had they an argument me. yesterday with two minority friends about being a straight white dude is the hardest thing in the world. Hmm. I, I, mean, I, I want nothing less than to be a white man. It's a fucking miserable life you guys have. Do you want nothing less than to be us? That yeah. means you want to be us. No, I want nothing more. Oh, that's more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm not going. I'm not going to play victim about shit. I'm just saying it is. There's this conscious effort. Just I don't like politics. Get that's why I shut down so hard when he brought up Trump because I was like I love that politics doesn't come into here because yeah, politics. Yeah. Not even just actual politics, but like identity politics. But it plays into fucking everything in the world, yeah. and it's so annoying Yo, to me. Yo, and then life, and then there's not a lot of fun around it. No, right? well, with us we can have fun, but like when you get a motherfucker who really buys into that, and then you start to crack jokes oh, that are God. like s- sarcastic, it triggers their. Oh, yeah. Well, we shouldn't joke around about that. Like I was talking to this girl who works with retards, right? Yeah. And like she, <laughs> she, she what? Well, she well she she calls them like. <laughs> What are they? Um, Special? No, uh, Puerto Ricans. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Come on, man. Sit your retarded ass down. Look. <laughs> no, no, but she works with like. She, she called. <laughs> Guys, come on. It's a joke. Puerto Ricans don't work. Look. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, no, no. So, uh, so we keep it flagrant. Uh, just cut the clip right now. <laughs> yeah. the Instagram. Just cut the clip right now. So, oh, but no, fuck. she works with like special needs kids or whatever like that. And I, and I was just like, you know, I'd call them tards or whatever, but like I didn't. <laughs> I didn't mean it like. No, I always say they're a little late to class. They're a little tardy. <laughs> they're a little tardy. <laughs> they're a little tardy. <laughs> they tardy. They're bro. a little late to class. They are. They're a little late to class. <laughs> pink slips. <laughs> These motherfuckers are pink slips. Yo yo. <laughs> she teach hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all I'm saying, she was a little, you know, triggered, triggered by it. I tried to explain to her like. It's the funniest line, and there's something about Mary. Right. It's literally one. I remember this line for 20 years. Okay. Is uh, Matt Dillon or whatever is trying to impress Cameron Diaz, so he makes up this whole fake persona, and yeah. she, he, she has a, a special needs brother or whatever. Yeah. And then he's trying to impress her. He says, I'm an architect, but that's just my profession. It's not my passion. And she goes, what's your passion? He just goes, I work with retards. And it was so fast and so <laughs> matter of fact. I fucking remember how funny that line is to this day. <laughs> I work with retards. <laughs> Because <laughs> he truly didn't know it was yo, wrong yet. Yo, yeah, I yeah. work with yo, yo. retards. Yo, deadass, there's few things funnier than like not knowing you're being offensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, oh. but like, you know, so she was, she works with, and she was like, you got to call them special needs and then say the thing. You know, like uh, whatever it's it is. Too many syllables. Facts, exactly, right? So like, 
But what I was trying to say is, and, and I was teasing in general, but I was trying to say is, like, we decide if words are offensive or not, right? right. There was a time where the word retard wasn't offensive, no, right? No, it was actually the nice way to say it. It was actually a scientific term, right? Yeah. A re- retardation, it just means slowing down. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, if you have a retarded heartbeat, you know what I mean? It's yeah. your heartbeat. It's Puerto Rican. <laughs> No, it's you know it's because your heartbeat sounds like this. <laughs> Yo, and you put that ste- son, if you put that stethoscope up there, literally, if you put the stethoscope up there, you put your ear next to it, you just hear ice cream. <laughs> so when you flatline, when you die, is it just? <laughs> oh god. So, this so, is this is the most flagrant. Yo, peak flagrancy. We gonna need we gonna need a Patreon, y'all. We gonna need a Patreon. We gonna need a Patreon. It's the, the only way we can survive. Only way we can survive. We we have ever had. Only way we can survive. You know who would find this funny? Summer retard. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but what I was trying to say is this: is I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> Yo, he did not struggle. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh man! Uh, so look. Oh fuck. Point is, point is, I was trying to explain to her. I was like, "Yo, it's about intent." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what? It's about intent. We all guys over here. We need cash back. Yo, we really do, man. We really do, man. You know what no. mean? Oh my god. <laughs> yo, yo, Alex. You sit your fucking athletic short wearing ass down. Get the fuck out of here, bro. So, oh my god. <laughs> sons. Sons. This is my point. Oh my god. It's about intent. Oh my god. If you say a word, right? I'm not even gonna say it because it's gonna make us laugh now. But if you say a word, right? A word is just a fucking sound, right? Especially one that used to be scientific. <laughs> Don't leave. No, no, keep it in. Keep it in. Keep it in. Keep it in. It's okay to laugh, but you keep it right here, okay? <laughs> this motherfucker. Yo, yo. You know who else makes yo. sounds for words? <laughs> <laughs> I can't breathe. Tart. <laughs> Yo, yo, Alex literally on the ground right now, son. Alex is on the ground, bro. Yo. Oh, my God, son. It's funny because that is what you say about a retarded person is words. It's just yo. sounds. Yo. yo, Alex, you good, bro? You good? You're fucking making me cry over here, Dude, bro. it's all, it's all, hey, look. Oh, this man. is what it is. It's flagrant, too. Oh, you know what this is the yo, wildest it's you know ever what, been. You know what the oh, great thing about flagrant, too, is, shit. and I have to say this, and about this show specifically, is um, the two stands for the number that retards can count up to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you leave. Don't you leave. No, you stay right there and you stay by the mic, okay? You stay right there. You stay right there and you stay by the mic, yo. Yo, this is the wildest episode we've ever had. Alex can't breathe. Holy fuck. Oh, shit. Listen, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, this dude. This dude. This dude. Look, the point. The point is this. The point is this. I was trying to explain. Look, look. I obviously, when I'm saying that, I don't have any ill will towards you know this group of people. <laughs> <laughs> Probably cries. <laughs> Moms when they have her darted son. Stop it. 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 I apologize oh, to everyone. You know what we call in this episode Frank Sampy! <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Son, you got your son. This shit. 
is fucking <laughs> off the rails. Yo, this shit is Alex. Oh my Yo, god. This, oh my god. This shit, oh my god. This shit, oh my god. This shit is oh off the god. fucking yeah. rails, bro. I almost just peed up myself. Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck, you know who else pees on the <laughs> Oh my god! Bro. Oh my god! Bro. Oh fuck! Bro. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if we can put this out. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't let me tell y'all something, asshole army. Let me tell y'all I something. Don't know if we let me tell y'all something. <laughs> y'all gonna y'all gonna prove something to us this week. Oh it's an experiment. All right, it's an experiment with how with how on page with the flagrancy you are. Oh yeah, because we gonna put this out. And if nobody gets pissed about this shit and nothing happens, then real talk, we got something special. If if no if nothing goes crazy, we don't get any backlash, nothing, we got something special because we got what everybody wants. The ability to joke around yeah. about absolutely fucking anything. So this is we it's a roll of the dice. It's a risk. What are we gonna do? You Bro, willing to take that? I'm willing to take the risk because I wanna see how far we could push and what we could do. If we got We're loyal, not gonna be able to all right, well, if we got loyal Followers, we got loyal, we got loyal motherfuckers who fuck with us. It's only a we matter of time, see. though. I, I, listen, I think it's just only a matter of time before t- hashtag times up. That's what I think. It is weird. I mean, they co- yo, that's just something they come for you. Eventually, they come for you. Motherfuckers come for you. You fuck up, they come for you. And that's an unfortunate situation in the world. That's why that universal fame shit. I don't want it no more. Fame doesn't seem fun anymore. Oh no, it's not. It's it's the worst time to be famous. But most importantly. The universe, like that. What I want is a fucking tribe. Yo, that's what's up. I want an army. I want a following of people where we just fuck it. We are insulated from everybody else. We fuck, we create our shit. And if anybody wants to get us over to help them with their content, sure, we can knock it out. Sure, we'll do some movies. Sure, we'll do some TV shows. But we got our shit that we do here. And if you try to take it away from us, guess what? It ain't going to happen. Because if you try to take you try to take ads, we still good. You try to take us off YouTube, we go on, we go on Vimeo. You try to take us off Vimeo, we put the shit out on this. We put the shit out on that. Wherever we go, we migrate with the tribe. Fucking gypsies. You were saying this last week, and now I, I don't. we don't need to get into any crazy whatever. But I'm seeing now, trying to be famous is not. They're going to come for everyone. And that's why if what you, you were saying. If you want universal fame, yeah. you can't have a voice. And he just your people. Have your people. Be famous with your people who fuck with you, who get you. Me, At least son, always have that. Son, that's enough for me. I, I don't... I'm someone who speaks for a living, has ideas for a living. That's what I cherish. I don't. I never wanted fame. I just understood it was a byproduct of greatness. I still want to be the greatest ever in stand-up like we should all want to be. Yeah. But but to, to, to seek something that would silence me... Like, you ain't heard Brad Pitt's opinion on nothing? No. You know what I mean? Kevin What's Hart, it? who I love and think is super funny... Makes it a point to Jordan it. No opinions. No opinion. Which which is fine because his comedy is, is more and, personal. And I, I love Kevin Hart and I'm not gonna yeah, bad mouth the suit. I don't give a fuck. I don't wanna yeah. hear his opinions if you don't want to give them. Sure. Cool. I was supporting him. And I respect what. motherfuckers who make that decision. Yeah. That's fine. What I'm saying, what I love is being able to talk but this yes, shit. Yes. So I would never want something that could ruin it. You're not gonna pay me enough money to not talk this shit. Yeah. Want, yeah. So for that's, my people will prop me up. We good. Bro, I'm telling you. You could buy me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still gonna take the money. But if they, when they come for me, I'm always gonna try to stay true to the assholes. Whoever, whoever yeah. our asshole army turns into being, I always want to stay true to them because those are the ones that are gonna lift me up when everybody else leaves. Yo, man, this is a beautiful thing we we doing over here, yo. Anyway, um, is there any other things? Is there any other things? I mean, listen, we don't have much time left. I I do think we spent it well. I do think the last twenty minutes was completely worth it. Um, Jason Tatum and is working with Kobe Bryant, and here's what I want to talk about with that. If you want to talk about that, we could also talk about LeBron doing the barbershop show that we said he oh, should do. We should mention on a positive note, LeBron's school. Oh, that's yeah, it's a beautiful. It's thing. dope, and like, it's dope. LeBron is. I mean, obviously, we you know Dick Ride LeBron on this show a lot, but it's cool to see somebody that's political. And also affecting the community directly, like because there's a lot of people that are pro- political. They like being out there. They like being out there, but mm-hmm. I don't see the, the the money out there like that, right? Like I don't see it. This dude, a school, 
School that's change lives. that's millions of dollars, and they do have the ability to actually fundamentally change the life of human beings in a way that tweeting does not. No. In a way that walking down the street with a poster does not. Okay. So, while not everybody is in his, his in his position to do it, the fact that that was his choice. I mean, look what Oprah did when she was making those schools in Africa and stuff. Like, yo, that shit, and like. Andre Agassi did a school in Vegas. Son. Found a privileged kids. You want, let, let me read one thing real quick. Please, yeah, tweeted yeah, this. Go, 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 it go. said, how does the I Promise school differ from any other school? The school will operate with a longer than normal school year with a focus on accelerated learning to bring kids up to speed who otherwise might be lagging. In addition, there is a focus on combating factors outside of the classroom that could cause children to struggle. Services are available to help students deal from stress related to parents who are struggling to make, ev- make ends meet. In addition, there are activities to prevent the kids from having too much idle time and potentially getting into trouble. The school also provides services to families, which include job placement assistance for parents and, on- and an on-site food bank that will allow parents to pick out foods they can prepare at home. LeBron James often credits his bicycle as a huge factor in his childhood that gave him an escape from dangerous parts of his neighborhood and the freedom to explore. Every student will receive a bicycle when they arrive. This is fucking incredible. Incredible. I mean, it's like, you. Do, I don't know, man. You just see a lot of people that talk. Just a lot of people do a lot of talking, bro. And, like, to be in a position where you can directly affect children's lives man and like to put the money up yourself for it and to think it yeah. all the way through to the family yeah. level to the that's so beautiful yo. <clears throat> son like it that's is that's a beautiful I'm, thing I'm, man I'm, I'm not you know I'm not like I'm dude the shit about the bicycle man people don't realize it like I'm fortunate I grew up in New York where like at a very young age I could walk around yeah I could see different people's lives you know, I could see where I live, which is pretty privileged, but I could also go to my boy's house who's, you know, in the projects and I could see ten blocks away. Facts. And like when you give somebody <clears throat> the ability to expose themselves. You open up the whole world to them. Open up the, that's what the internet did. You know what I mean? Like you grow, growing up in Far Rock, right? Mm-hmm. You know a lot of cats didn't leave Far Rock. They're not going to Manhattan. They're not seeing how the, the you know, the yeah. fucking rich <clears throat> folks live, this, that, the other. Even seeing it makes it tangible. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You go to a beach house and you're like, I would like a beach house. This person has <coughs> one. Why can I not have one? Do you know what I mean? One of the things about neighborhoods or like distribution of wealth and class is it removes people from dreaming. If you never see outside of your class, yeah. the biggest thing you can dream of is the biggest guy in your in your class, yeah. right? It's the drug dealer. It's the whoever. Yep. It's the drug. It's I can whoever. tell you that's factual, man. And you see, I didn't change my life until I went to high school in Manhattan. In, in Manhattan. Yep. So it's like, ah, oh man, it's like some fucking touching shit. I'm not trying to get emotional here, but like, when you give a kid something as small as like a bicycle or something as small as like, you know, after school activities, so you're not getting involved in like you know gang shit, that kind of stuff like that. You're really giving the kid the ability to dream. You know, a lot of times, one of the things they do is when they go to underprivileged schools, you know, anytime I spoke at a school, I'd always ask them to what they want to do. Yeah. And one, they're embarrassed a lot of times of their lofty dreams. Right. Right? Like I had a girl say that she wanted to, to own a bakery. And she was like, yeah, but that's, you know, that's stupid. And I go, how many people here in this class would like to own a bakery? And nobody raised their hand. Right. And I said, you see this? If you don't open a bakery, none of us can eat cupcakes. Hmm. And it was like, in that moment, she realized, oh, shit, I, we, I, we kind of need people mm-hmm. to right. dream. We right. want people. And it's like, you see this so often in underprivileged areas. It, my, where my mom is from in Scotland, you know, like – the idea of leaving Scotland and coming to America and like was buying pop was insane. Yeah. Like her own family would be like, that's absurd. What are you yeah. talking? That's not going to happen. <clears throat> you give these kids the ability to fucking dream. Yeah. And not every single one of them is going <clears> to <throat> end up doing it, but that's the difference right there. The, the idea that you can potentially do anything. The Man. thing that I really liked was ex- like a longer school year. Like this is not 
hey, I'm cool, LeBron James, Th- school, I didn't go to college. This is a longer-than-normal school year. So if you're going to come to LeBron James' school, you're going to be in school when other kids have the summer Damn. and with the idea of catching you up. So kids, I know how fucking frustrating it is to feel like everybody's ahead of you. I'm an Indian kid who does stand-up comedy. All my friends are doctors and whatever the fuck. So in a grown-up way, I understand that. Maybe not the same way as them, but I understand. All my friends were making fucking hundreds. They got tutoring, whatever, growing up. I felt behind. I know how frustrating that can be. And if if you're behind in school and you just don't get it, you're giving up. It's true. A longer-than-normal school year with the explicit purpose of catching you up if you're behind is... So fucking empowering in a sense of like, oh, I can do this. They're going to take extra time to make sure I can do it. And then when I start to do it, confidence means everything. Builds everything. And that's... Building block for everything. It is the foundation of everything. And it's like, if you have one thing that you're good at, you can ride that yep. confidence in other parts yep. of your body. There are certain per- people, like, they don't realize what they're good at yet. Yeah. You know, but if you are, for example, you could be good at basketball, you're good at spelling, you could be good at woodwork. It doesn't matter what the fuck you're good at. But right. having one thing that you excel mm-hmm. at... Right is something that you can feel proud of. Yeah. Right. It's something that you can go to to get uh, validation. Yep. You know what I mean. And then you can go, oh, I worked hard at this. Why don't I just apply that same thing? Right. To something else. Um. Yeah, dude. It was. Uh. It's. It's just. Oh, it's man. beautiful, man. Yeah. There was one thing. There's one other thing <clears throat> I wanted to say about it. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was just. Uh, this is fucking great, man. It's. It's really great. I'm looking forward to see like what happens. Oh, that's what it is. The extended school year. I think a lot of people don't realize when you grow up with, like, relatively good background, like, school is annoying. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, you go to school, you're like, oh, I got to fucking go to school. Yeah. And uh, when is school over? You know yeah. what I mean? When you grow up in horrible conditions yeah. where maybe your mom's doing some drugs, your yeah. pops is doing some drugs, uh, your brother or something like that might be in some gang shit. You know what I mean? There's a lot of fucked up things in the household. School... Is the escape. Yeah. School is the dream. You yeah. love school. Yeah. Because you go there and you're getting good food. Especially a school that empowers you. So it's like we have this idea about school as this annoyance, <clears throat> but for some people it's this uh, safe haven. Yeah. You know, and, the Id- and especially underprivileged folks, that's th- the fact that you could have two meals a day. Yeah. That might be the only two yeah, meals. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, right. uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, it seems like we're just jocking LeBron, but I think this is an awesome thing. Man, I don't give a fuck. If you no, think we're jocking LeBron for this, yeah, you're and, an idiot. And I'll tell you one thing, and and I don't want to wrap this into whether you should or shouldn't, you know, kneel for the flag. That's your life. You can absolutely do it. But what I will say is, if kneeling for the flag ends up costing you money, just remember what money can functionally do. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like. If all those players took all the money that they would lose kneeling for the flag this year for the you know suspension, and they pooled that, and then they opened up another school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like, true. think, ab- That's think true. about, like... I, it's bigger and all that, and I don't even want to... I don't even want to yeah, get into the yeah. issue, but what I'm saying is, like, what we don't, what I've talked about with this podcast, it, it's just about, like, efficiency. It's as valid a thought as kneeling is. J- yeah, exactly. It's just, and it's, like, efficiency. What is the goal? How do we get there? Right, right. Right? And, like, how do we use it? Okay, it's going to cost us... You should be doing the math. If all of you guys kneel this year, it's gonna, and it costs you $10 million total in fines, think about that $10 million and think about how that could help the community and, and right. you know, stop police brutality. With te- What could you do with $10 million functionally to reduce police brutality? <clears throat> and that's one way, and I think the most efficient way to tackle a problem. But whatever, again, we're not telling you what the fuck to do. Obviously, you do whatever you want. You're an American. <coughs> Ultimately, we all want to stop police brutality. We got to leave soon, but this is what oh, yeah. I was thinking real quick. Go. This is the difference between Jordan post-retirement and LeBron even in his career. Jordan never touched this stuff. Mm. LeBron is willing to, to fuck with whatever and do whatever he needs to do. And I was also the Kobe Bryant, Jason Tatum thing, where Kobe Bryant's working with Jason Tatum. Right. Kobe Bryant's doing this series on ESPN+. Plus. Kobe Bryant's winning an Oscar in the Me Too era, even though he's a Me Too guy. Kobe Bryant, post-retirement, Jordan may have the better career, you can say, than both of these guys, but they are definitely going to have a better post-career than Michael Jordan. This motherfucker is a crying meme whose eyes are always bloodshot, (laughs) always looks fucking just terrible, like he's dying every time you see him. Kobe Bryant looks fucking incredible. Immaculate. 
working with everybody, winning Oscars, Renaissance man, businessman, LeBron James is changing the fucking world, and here's Michael Jordan. Dude, I am excited for LeBron's post-retirement, 100%. Right? Yeah. Like, think <laughs> of, you, you see these philanthropic endeavors right He's now. He's going to be black Warren Buffett. It's, it it's, might fucking be. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. It's going to be crazy. It might be. It's going to be that kind of thing. Hopefully he gets his billion. He might, he might not be as wealthy, but it's gonna, it's gonna be crazy philanthropy and just he's a guy that you're gonna want to listen to speak. Imagine if Bill Russell got paid like today's athletes. Oh, That's dude. what I think LeBron is gonna be. So, how interesting would it be that only in retirement does he truly live up to his name, the King? <laughs> yeah, it's dope. Yeah, right? That's possible. Like really protecting. His yeah. community, his yeah. people, his realm, or whatever the right. fuck you want to yeah. say, and doing all these things and leading them in the best possible yeah. way. Like, what a cool even 30 for 30. Right. Like, see what he did in his career. Yeah. And then this next career where it's like, oh, no, that's where you actually became yeah. royalty. Yeah. You became – this was awesome that you could play basketball real yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. This is where you became – You were royalty. Now you're a king. Now, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, this is your prince stage. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Is yeah. your print, but when you're, we'll see what happens. Right. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, dates, Akash. Uh, you go first. I, okay. I got I to look um, mine up. Yo, guys, theandrewschultz.com, you can get all the dates. We're adding new cities all the time. Um, the next ones that I can remember off my head, it's uh, Seattle. Those tickets are going, so hurry up on that. Seattle and then Vancouver. I'll be up in Vancouver as well. That's uh, August 16th and then 17th. Then I'm going to come back in the city and do some shows in New Brunswick, uh, New Jersey, which is uh, – uh, or is it New Brunswick? I think New Brunswick. Mm. Uh, it's New Jersey. Um, so make sure you go check those out. Uh, and then I'm off to Europe. Come out to the Europe shows, man. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm fucking excited for those, man. Um, I think we got still got some tickets left for the second show in London. I think we sold out the first one in London. But come check out the rest. Spread the word. Tell your peoples out there. You know what I mean? You know, tell your peoples out there. If you got some people in a city or some friends in a city, send them a clip of mine. And then be like, yo, you got to check this guy out. I can't tell you how grateful I am to, uh, for you guys that do that. And I know it happens because I'll be on the road and someone will say, hey, my friend said you were really funny. And, you know, we watched a clip or two and ended up coming out. Thank you so much for the show. So thank you guys for doing that. And I got, you know, we had Atlanta. We had Tempe. We got Chicago. We got Milwaukee. We have Madison. We have all these fucking cities. And I'm excited to come see all y'all. So thank y'all so much. Keep the assholes tight. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're tentatively, we're not positive this is going to go down. It's up to us whether or not we want to do it, but Pittsburgh could happen September 26th, the day before our Southern tour actually kicks off. Okay. And then after that, locked in. You can get tickets for any of these shows on uh, AmericanBornDesiComics.com. Desi is D-E-S-I. Uh, but Nashville, Zany, September 27th. Uh, Huntsville, Stand Up Live, September 28th and September 29th. Atlanta, we're going to be at the Red Clay Comedy Festival, September 30th. Charlotte, we're going to be at the Comedy Zone, October 2nd. And then October 3rd, we're going to be in Raleigh at Good Nights Comedy Club. And October 4th, we just added this DC Improv, uh, Wednesday, October 4th. Guys, thank you. Fuck with us. This has been another episode of Flagrant 2. The most flagrant. The 